tonight can the boys go back to back against the south sydney rabbitos next week watch live and loud from the lounge or sports bar this saturday 23rd of april at 7 35 p.m and of course our major sponsor west ashfield you can make a night of it with dinner in the garden with all your favorite burgers schnitzels and wildfire pizzas step up and play at the home of the west tigers west ashfield 115 liverpool road ashfield for more information, visit Wes Ashfield's website, westashfield.com, or give him a follow on Facebook or Instagram at Wes Ashfield. And we are live. Welcome to a very special edition of the West Life Podcast. A winner's lounge. What a game I have Rob, uh, along with me, Shane's still coming in. Um, I've got the boys and another Easter miracle. So not only was that field goal an Easter miracle, the three of us are in the room uh, at once while we record. We've never actually done that before. So um, bear with us as we uh, work through through uh, technical difficulties. But uh, Rob Bashar, before I get to you, obviously give us a follow on the socials, guys, at Westlife Pod on Instagram, Twitter. Um, yeah, so people are tuning in as we speak through the Facebook, YouTube. Give us a subscribe on the YouTube as well. But uh, Rob Bashar, I only got back from the game, what, two and a half hours ago? We, uh, man, it, uh, it was good to be there, but you wish you were there alongside us up in the, uh, there was probably about, I reckon, 100 and out of the 28,000, there might have been a few hundred of us, the West Tigers fans, but my God, it was good. You uh, you missed a good one. Yeah, yeah it was, was a great, great watching, watching on TV. TV. I've, I've got, got a, a bit, bit of an echo going on here, by, by the, the way. It's a bit, yeah, it's just a stream. You're hearing the stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. okay. Um, yeah, yeah no, it was no, great to watch on TV. TV. Great, great win for the boys. boys. Um, the, the club needed it. The fans needed it. The coaching staff needed it. And, yeah, it's just great to get the monkey off our back. Absolutely. So uh, we're just waiting for Shane to um, come on in. But um, Rob, who are the standout guys for you? Shane called me in an excitement. Uh, I might have to calm him down a little bit before. He was talking so well, we need to uh, save it all for the podcast. But he basically said all the guys that we've been criti critical of were the guys that really stepped it up tonight. I reckon it was safe to say that half the squad had their best game of the year. Um, I, I know, know you're going to ask about, about a 3-2-1 later. later. I reckon, I reckon I've, got I've got five, five men, men of the match. match. Yeah. So, so it's, it's just going to be hard to really split, split I know. Around. I've been thinking thinking long and hard about that as well. But um, I thought what I might do to start off, I might uh, – let's just get a little bit pumped. Bear with me. So I'm going to 
Thanks to the West Tigers. I'm going to... No. Hang on. I'll bring, I'll bring it up. Just uh, keep, keep talking, Rob. I'll, um, I've got a surprise. For, not really a surprise, but something just to get us in the mood. Tonight's, tonight might be a long one, so... That's all right. Um, the guys have played well. well. Obviously, Obviously, the halves stood out. out. Um, um, Jackson, Jackson Hastings, Hastings, Luke Brooks. Luke Brooks. Uh, I thought uh, Alex Twile had a great game. game. Luciano Lelou Lelou was a beast. beast. How, How do I leave, leave Notter out of the 3-2-1? There, there were just, just so, so many, many good players, players today. today. But, but if, if you, you have, have to go, go who orchestrated, orchestrated the, the win? I've got to go Hastings and Brooks. They were outstanding. So they're the ones that stick out for me. But really, there was no one that had a bad game. Right, so this should work now. Josh, I want to take these headphones out. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah. This echo's killing me. Oh, there you go. Oh. No, so now your phone. Turn your, turn your phone, turn your phone, 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 phone. now. We're going good, guys. We're going good. We're getting there. We're getting there. Hang on. Hang on. Volume's down. Bear with us, guys. Bear with us. Okay. I think we're good to go. Can you hear me at all now? Because I've muted. I've gone down way low. Uh, Celebrity Cave. Is the audio sound better now? We should have really tested this before we got in, on air, but the boys were running late. You get any feedback? Can you hear me through your headphones? Much, much better. better. That's should be said much better. better. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys. That's better. Right. Let's talk about the game. Right. right uh, we'll go, go play by player. player. Let's start with uh, Dane Laurie. So, thoughts on Dane this week? Dane Laurie made up for the Penrith jersey with that tackle on Guffo. All is forgiven. Um, wasn't his best game. He still has to catch those bombs on the full. He's still letting them bounce. So, he's obviously lacking a bit of confidence there. Uh, but you know his defence, his tries, his to Kenny, his involvement, his involvement is there. But yeah, just he has to get under that high ball. We just can't be letting balls bounce and hoping for the best. It's, you know, everyone else is trying to catch those awkward bombs. So you know he's definitely improving. But yeah, I thought he had a really good game. What about you, Josh? Yeah, I thought I was considering. Just turn your turn your phone volume down. I was considering him for my three points. So I'll go through the stats for him. 112 run metres, 18 runs, nine kick return metres. As long as I can get it. What else? One dummy half run, 29 receives, three tackles, three missed, uh, one error. What am I going to do? <laughs> But, yeah, yeah, that's uh, better. Got a lot going live. That's better. Pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. The, just point your camera. <laughs> We're, We're going, going good, guys. We're going, going good. Nice here. Uh, any nice comments nice. on Dan Lurie, guys? In the comment, in the chat, absolutely go for it. But yeah, I thought after a few games this year, obviously at the start of the year, coming back from injury, he looked very um, lost a lot of his confidence. But setting up those tries, he looked like back to his. Play banking best. The whole team just seemed to click a lot better today, and he, yeah. So, um, yeah, Dame was absolutely outstanding. I was really considering giving him my three points until Hastings really finished. I just thought we well, set up the try for Kenny in the corner. He was really safe. The tackle on Guffo, as you mentioned, that was just uh, that was big. Oh, here he is. Here he is. I'm tied up. I it's all excitement. You're on mic. You're on mic, Shane. Grab that mic. So you're on mic. Get your phone out. Get your phone out. Okay. Get your phone out. Or maybe just shovel it. Just go, just go on camera with... There you go. Just go there, buddy. Yeah, just share the camera. I'm all tied to the other camera. <laughs> Here he is. Righto. He's back from Darwin. Unleash. Go. We're talking about Dane Laurie. Go for it. <laughs> uh, he made... Gutho, his bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the best tackles from a kick chase I have seen anyone in a Tigers jersey do. Knocked him back two metres as well. Fed him. Like, yeah. like, he was in the middle of the... Like, he was literally middle of his own try line. Yeah. Like, couldn't have been better. Couldn't have been better. Like, 
look, I've been pretty critical with him. As we all have. And honestly, today is the first game I've seen this year where he had a bit of intent. Like, he, he knew where he needed to be. His positioning was a lot better. He got turned with that little kick from... Um, Heads, heads blank. So all I'm thinking about is Tigers. I don't care about Eels. Moses? <laughs> no, they're number six. Dylan, oh, Dylan Brown. Brown. That's it. Um, Brown put that little grubber through. And, like, I shit myself. He was right there. Got the ball away. Like, this is the stuff that we haven't been seeing. And that's what we've been critical about. And he literally has done all of it. It's funny. I just said the word intent before you walked up the stairs. So we didn't plan that. I think the whole team had intent, mate. I know the camera got it up. It was a big high fives, man. It was, it's <laughs> like, it's just. On the... I just realised that your background here. <laughs> Yeah, shout out to Justin for my uh, for making my background for me tonight. One of our Patreon members. So uh, it is, it's Easter, guys. It's Easter. You can do it. It's um it it's chaos tonight. But you want to go to messenger or no? That's all. Leave it. That's all. That's all right. It's working. It's working. Tiger King one. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, righto, number two, number two, Nofaluma. Thoughts on David Nofaluma? I'll just go through his statistics. Uh, 17 runs, 143 metres, 21 kick return metres, obviously two tries for Knopf as well. Post-contact metres, 31, six tackle breaks, uh, three offloads, uh, nine tackles, two missed. Any errors for Knopf? Yes, one handling error for Knopf. Uh, Rob, thoughts on Knopf Luma? Outstanding. Could easily have given him a man of the match. I mean, when you say get man, you know, man of the match awards. Uh, two tries were great. The amount of offloads he did off the back of hard yards from the back end of our field, he had a few offloads. I remember one in particular to, to the jet in made extra 10 or 15 metres. Uh, first try I got excited. When he got the second try, like my head just, like the bell started ringing, welcome to Rocky Land. It was like, okay, we can win this. You know, gave me a bit of belief. So, yeah, very excited for Noff. Love the way he got up with a little bit of swagger and I was just like, okay, boys are freaking here to play, man. Let's go. Well, I've been saying, boys. Get the board and offer. That's it. That's that's literally all we needed to do. Um, man, what, what can I say? Like, again, his positioning was awesome. He, the little bits and pieces that, like, as soon as Hastings gave that little glance, he knew exactly what was on. Like, yeah. there was no ends or buts. He knew what he had to do. And it was literally a glance. Jack O just went, oh, and then put the kick in. Straight into it. Um, that that was wild. And look, Brooksy's big hard bridge pass. Like, well, it was so funny. I said last week or the week before, I said, no, not going to score a try until AD gets back with that long face ball because no yeah. one's been giving him that long face ball. And sure enough, today, Brooksy does a long face ball. And, and, he, and he did a really good move to score. Yeah, and that was in round one. He did the yeah, same thing. He did the same thing in Yeah. Beautiful finish. Out and just straight Beautiful into finish. We free now on him again. Uh, great finish. No, oh, man, like, look, oh, yeah, I've been, I've been critical of him as well, but it's more so he hasn't been getting ball. And, like, what's a winger meant to do when you're not getting any service, not getting any ball? Like, it's it's almost impossible. You, you, you've got to run inside. He's carried the he's carries carries been okay. He just hasn't had enough ball well, and enough opportunities. He's carried always good. Yeah, he's, he's, he's carried always good. So, right, right, I'm going to let some of the, um, the Patreon members have a bit of a – Celebration. So I'm going to add Aaron on. Aaron, you there, buddy? Yeah, oh, good. Me yeah. Going too. yeah, good. Might as well. Yeah. I've still got the jersey on. Might as well. Might as well rock it. <laughs> <Hey, Aaron. laughs> you boys can hear him, okay? <laughs> yeah, sweet. Uh, Aaron, where'd you watch the game today, buddy? Just at home, mate. Uh, had work earlier today. Got off. Uh, well, we, we closed in time for me to get home and have a bit of time to uh, soak it in, get ready for the game. Tell you what, I was nervous as hell going into it. I bet everyone was. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, nerves, nerves, the right word? Maybe terrified? It'd probably be <laughs> worse because I, I went to the game. Silently shitting ourselves. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Shitting, shitting myself is probably better than nerves. Man, I'll shit myself on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Shane obviously flew in. When did you land today from Darwin? You trip with Pasco. 
I think four forty. Okay. okay. So like I had the worst internet known to men. I was streaming in like two pixels. <laughs> And it was cutting out every two seconds, but you know what? I saw. I it's what you needed. Just saw, saw what I needed to see. <laughs> no, the missus in the car. Give me the feedback. Give me the feedback. And she was, <laughs> was dropping back in. I'm like, what's happening? Score up, mate. Hurry up. <laughs> Refresh. Uh, this one. Trent commented on Facebook where my background is. Justin uh, sent it to me on our Westlife Pod Twitter. So. If you type in at Westlife Pod, um, oh, someone someone else just shared it. If you go to at one Aussie Larrikin, he's just shared it as well. But um, I'll see if I can find it. I think I, I think I retweeted it too. A couple of people. If you if you, if you do at Westlife Pod on Twitter, you should find it. Um, any other thoughts on the game today, Aaron? Thoughts on we've already talked about a couple of players, but who are your standouts? I think my standouts are probably the same as most people's Jacko for sure, Brooksy, Noffa. Honestly, I can't really fault anyone in the team. I'm really nervous for Jakey Simpkin, though. Hopefully, mm. he's uh, he's all good after whatever they diagnose for him there. But I'm I'm still bouncing off the walls. I I've not been keen to watch us play Parramatta for years, ever since that uh, mauling at Bankwest a few years back, the the opening day one. But to see how the team ripped in today for each other, for the coach, uh, thing of beauty, honestly, thing of beauty. Yeah, it was amazing. Uh, next player, we're going to explain the line. Stay with us for the next. Um, yeah, I'm just a quick one on Jakey. Yeah, go. I'll be honest, like, even well, you got sent off. Oh, you got, he got taken off after what, 60, minutes. sixty minutes. Yeah. To me, he was man of the match. Wow. What what I saw out of dummy half, we haven't had this year. He was taking that three or four steps forward, which we didn't see last week. Well, what did little do? I was saying to Josh, I had five, but I would have had six if you know, obviously came off in twenty minutes. So, so I kind of ruled him out. But yeah, he was outstanding. That's that's why I would yeah. I couldn't give it to him. Yeah. But 60 minutes in, I was just like, <laughs> "Yeah, like, why did this have to happen? To me, like, it's what we haven't had in a very long time. Someone that was actually probing, pushing the line. And his steps forward gave our forwards a base to get some speed up and hit the line. Exactly. And that's what we haven't had. Yep. All right, we'll go, we'll go through Jake now. We won't do it. Who cares? We don't have to do it in number order. We, <laughs> you, <laughs> Throw the rule book out the window. <laughs> it's a, it's a, we've won. I don't think anyone's going to care that we don't do the players by chrono, chronological order. So, Jakey Simpkin, 58 minutes, so pretty much, yeah, 20 minutes ago, 22 minutes ago, um, he was carried off, unfortunately. Uh, eight runs for 67 metres, 11 post-contact metres, four hit-ups, three dummy half runs. 26 metres out of dummy half. Uh, he's 57 passes, 31 tackles made, four missed, and no errors, but two penalty, penalties given away. Uh, Rob, thoughts on Jake Simpkin? Yeah, as Shane said, outstanding. Um, I don't think those stats do him justice. I think you've got to use a bit of the eye test there, guys. Like, he, he fed the halves really well. He's right out forwards on, on, you know, the go forward. Uh, he backed up quite a few times. Uh, he straightened things up a fair bit. And, you know, it's hard for, like, Jakey looked like he was going to play 80 minutes today. So it's hard to, like, he hasn't ever had that role, you know. So we've always had, you know, lids swapping with him and stuff like that. So his effort was there, you know, a couple of times he got pushed off a little bit, but he made a second effort, made the tackles. But, yeah, outstanding effort, courageous effort. Sad that he's gone down because we're really going to have a big problem now. Uh, Rua's not going to be available uh, legally till after round 10, I believe. So do we get Little back there, which hope not? Are we going to put um, uh, what's it, John Madden in, in there? I don't think John Madden can handle the defensive work. Mm. Uh, are we going to put Brooks there? That's going to take away from what he did today. Because if you ask me, what we could do yeah. is run him there on attack and swap with Brooks on defence because Brooks' defence is good. So we have... Well, split, yeah, like they, they, 
swap positions. You could do, you could do that too. I even think you know, there's a so chance like somehow that means it will be too big for to bring Gucci back to share the role with someone. It's just it's just sad because you know like look, we just wanted to win today. All we gave a shit about today was winning. We See, did that, but like moving forward, you know, we've got a couple of decent injuries out of it. I think Kenny Marlow went down, and that that didn't look great either. So yeah. and he's been carrying injury for a few weeks, but no outstanding work by Jake Simpkin and. Yeah, good signs for the future if he sorts out that angle. Any other any thoughts on Jakey, Aaron? Honestly, probably one of the best games he's played. I am so stoked for him. Uh, he he his performance was beautiful when he was on. Just a shame that he had to go off the way he did. You guys have pretty much summed the rest of it up, though. I, yeah, I like the good. idea of uh, swapping Brooks and Jock depending on attacking and defending like what we did with Madison in those last few rounds of 2019, and that was working for us uh, pretty well. All right. So we'll swing back to number three, James Roberts. Uh, he had nine runs, 68 metres, 26 close contact, a couple of hit-ups, uh, six passes, 13 tackles, none missed, and gave away one penalty, and that's pretty much it. Jimmy Rob was a very quiet game from Jimmy Rob. Yeah, I think it was a quiet game, but a good game. Like, he did nothing wrong. He, he, I think it was just one of those games he didn't get as much opportunity as he normally yeah. would, but I've got no like criticism on him. Just, you know, those numbers will look a bit down, but he, he filled his role. So, yeah, I, I think it's, it's, again, a bit of the eye test. Yeah. Like, I, I think Jimmy played excellent. Um, Look, he, he wasn't, wasn't everywhere, everywhere, but when he got the ball, he ran with intent, yeah. especially defence-wise. Um, look, he didn't miss a tackle. Like, everyone blows up about how shit he is in defence. Did 13, none miss. Like, that's that's good for Sam. Yeah. And he was hitting, like, he had a few big boys on him, and he was, he was dropping them. And I, I noticed a few tackles where he really hit hard. And I was loving him. Got up under the ribs and just drove him back. And look, I think he's sort of... Pulled his finger out. He realised after last year and only getting, or well, not getting the club option this year, having to go back and now fight for his spot in the team and like, like really fight because it's like, mate, you don't have a job if you don't do this. I really think that was the best thing for him because it's really kicked him into another gear. And to be honest, like I, I haven't seen him play footy this good since the Broncos. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, this year, I, I really rate him. Like I. I, I say, say it every week. He's playing as like it's his last game. Because mm. it is. Yeah. It is. Like this, he doesn't have a contract after this season. Yeah. And we were lucky. Like, look, we're not nice enough to give him a contract. He deserved it. But at the end of the day, he knew that there was nothing. Yeah. At the end of this, if he didn't pull his finger out and play how he should be playing, you don't get yeah. a contract. You don't earn bread. What are you going to do after this? Yeah. Like, Aaron, any thoughts on uh, Jimmy Roberts? Defense was great, straight up. He defended really well and, yeah, playing every game like it's his last game because for all he knows, it could be if he has a shocker. I'm, I was happy to see him play well. Not, yeah, not too great in attack, but didn't really get the chances. Defense, though, uh, kept us in the game because they were running a lot down his side. Uh, righto, on to next in line. Now, nah, Luki Garner was number four. Goes by number. Luke Garner's number four. Nah, you, you can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's how the West Tigers website has it, don't we're bo- do, right, okay. we're, we're we're do the stats right. That's right. He wants to okay. It wasn't on for long anyway. I haven't got a run sheet, so if we don't, if we go too much out of order, <laughs> we're already, we're already at a rough start. It's right, Luke Lombardo. Luke Garner was technically number four, so he came on with eighteen minutes to go. He obviously went into the centres. He had five runs, forty-two meters, fifteen post contact, uh, a couple of tackle breaks, a hit up, uh, three tackles made, none missed. Um, yeah, it was nice having him. We've said it every week, but having him defensively, Shane, I'll let you go first. It was um, a good luxury to have. I thought he did well in his 18 minutes. Oh, look, tackle breaks as well. Like, we don't expect that from him in, in the center position because that's where he was playing. And, like, I didn't see anything wrong with how he played. Like, to be honest, I'm impressed. Like, defensively, the last few years, we've sort of given him a bit of shit because. At times, he has been a turnstile. Like, let's just 
how he played, like attack wise, there was never any issues. To be honest, like the last, I'd say, last half of last year and this year, defense has been incredible. It's just a wall there. And yeah. To be honest, bringing him in for those last, what was it, 17 minutes? Yeah, 18. Yep. 18 minutes. Like that shored up the defense to make sure, come on, guys, let's hold him out and let's fight for this. And to be honest, the whole team really fought for it. Uh, Rob, and yeah, he tackled his he tackled his ass off. Really, um, he's done that for three weeks in a row now. It's just hard that you know he's got to play centre. He's he's just not a centre. Period. You, you're going to get no attack out of him at centre. Um, really, he's probably the best hole runner we got in the club, <laughs> and he's not even getting to run in second row. So, um, no good on him. He's doing the job, and and I think it's that Madge attitude. You know, put me anywhere, I'll do a job for the team, sort of thing. And he's bought into it, and he really hasn't missed a beat. To be fair, so good on him. Aaron, I'll throw a bit of a curveball at you. How did you think Madge's rotations? They were pretty forced because of injuries, but did the ro- the he made a few changes late. How did you find the use of the bench uh, this Probably week? Probably one of his better uses of the bench, I reckon. Uh, obviously, like you said, a few changes were forced, but given who we had, I wouldn't have moved either Kelma or Luch to the centres, so I think throwing Garner in the centres primarily for the defense was the way to go. Uh, we heard the commentators uh, talking about what they were going to do once Jakey went off, whether they'd have, um, like they had a whole debate about whether it was going to be Brooks going into dummy half or whether it was going to be Jock coming on and playing dummy half. But I think that was probably the way to go as well with Brooksy in there. Uh, Jock, I don't think we've ever seen Jock do anything as a dummy half. So he him going into the 5 eighth and Brooksy going into dummy half, I think, worked pretty well. It, uh, it freed Hastings up to make those plays he did late in the game. But, yeah, overall, bench was used pretty well. I think uh, we'll probably get to Tamo soonish, but he, he got a lot more minutes than he normally would, and I yeah. don't think he, he uh, shied away from the extra responsibility that was put on him there. Just the whole team stepped up especially late in the game. Para were always getting the the runs on us, the meters. Uh, they were making them for fun at one point there, and the whole team just stepped up, muscled up, got the job done in the end. Right, Stafford Toa. Uh, there you go, boys. So we're moving to the number five in the jerseys. Uh, he played at centre. He played in centre. It was number <laughs> five. Like I said, I've said it before, what is the point of jersey numbers? Why can't the players just choose their own? Right. Case in point, one point for me for that opinion. Just let the players choose their own jersey and jersey numbers, put their names on the back so I can buy a Sean Bloor jersey. Uh, post-contact meters, 22. He had 26 runs. Uh, 20, sorry, 29. 96 meters from nine runs. Uh, three tackle breaks. One offload. Three passes. 10 tackles made, two missed, and one error. Thoughts on Stafford Toa, Rob? Played really well in attack. Um, he looked very dangerous in the first half, especially. Made one fantastic steppy run. Um, that was t- his three tackle breaks. <laughs> there, there, were, there were two things about his defence, okay? And this is going to sound a little bit contradictory. What I loved about his defence today was his reads. He got himself in the right spot every time. He read the block plays. He read everything Parramatta had coming at him. The only downside, I would say, was every first contact he made in defence was like they bounced off him. So he's got to work on his defence, but he was there to make the tackles. Like at least he was in position. There was like no holes. So, look, good game for his first game at left centre. And I dare say he's there to stay now because I can't see Gildart getting back in unless Gildart's moved to left wing or something like that. But I think Toa's there to stay. I'd like him, you know, like his defence to be better, but at least he could see what was coming at him and got himself in position. Yeah, that's it. He held himself in position. Yeah. And that, that's the biggest thing. Um, Parramatta was hitting his edge all the time and there was almost nothing there. Like, it was only Papalihi that really pushed through it. Yeah. And First half, there were a couple, but yeah. Yeah, like it, they sort of, they were able to stop it. Um, that, that run... It was a crazy run, wasn't it? <laughs> there was his three tackle breaks. And all <laughs> all, three bloody good tackle breaks. Um, oh, 
I'm just G'd. I'm just G'd. Good I just can't brother. believe them. Um, the boys played proper. They pro- proper football. I mean, Stafford, if if he doesn't stay in the team, like, I'll be shocked. Like, you, you all know I love Ollie, and I like his attack. I will straight up 100% agree. Defence needs work. But after today, like, I really do think... Tower deserves to stay in there. Like he he earned his spot, and unless someone's injured, and obviously get to, he'll get moved to. Like I'm thinking, Kenny's not looking too good. He'll get moved over, and Ollie will probably be back in. We need um, a we need a hybrid Ollie and Tower because Ollie can tackle. He's just <laughs> freaking there. Oh, that's it. <laughs> he, <laughs> when, when he gets a player, he tackles him, but he's just in the wrong spot all the time. And we're just like, so, where is he? Yeah, exactly. Where'd so the go? bloke can tackle, but yeah. It's just not the right spot at the right time. Yeah, Mitchell made a good point in the comments. So if Mamalo is out, maybe do to- do to Toa on the wing. Well, that's the thing. If we move Toa to the wing and put Luke Garner in the centres, there goes having a left side attack again. I love Luke Garner, but he's not going to create anything, man. Yeah, like we we got some spark today by having two legitimate centres and two guys that can back up and two guys that can make a break and. It's not fair to Luke Garner because he doesn't have the speed to beat his man, and, and every guy is going to be faster than him. You know, unless he's facing Talakai or, or like today, Nakora. I'm going to say, yeah, yeah, yeah Nikora, was a like for like today. is the same. Yeah, <laughs> Nakora's the same, but Nakora is a bit more dynamic, a little bit more dynamic, a little, so, bit, little bit more mobile. Do we know what happened to Kenny? I don't Injury know. Injury wise? I don't know. I was at the ground, so I wouldn't have a clue. Aaron. I know, got, I know he got taken off, but like. One of the listeners will. Yeah, like I, in or something yeah, like drop that. it in the comment. Too busy celebrating I was at the ground. So when you're at the ground, yeah, yeah. and we're, the Tigers fans were, were all tucked up in the bloody, literally the back corner. So you don't, we were the opposite. It's a shame the field goal. I mean, you can't complain about the field goal, but it was the other was the other there. side of the field. I knew it was coming. Yeah. The way he did those goal line dropouts in the first half going up over half, I'm like, man, he can nail this. He absolutely nailed it. Um, <laughs> he flipped on the last one, the second one he did. Did you see that? No, I didn't see that. Oh, yeah, when he, the, when he ran, yeah, he kicked no, it. No, the second goal line dropout, he yeah. kicked it and almost did a backflip. Yeah. <laughs> he put that much into it. <laughs> uh, Aaron, what, what, who do you, what do you think will be our one to five going forward, assuming Kenny's out? Obviously, one's Dane. Two to, two yeah, to five. One, one's Dane, two Noffa. Uh, the centres, I think Jimmy retains that that spot. Um, Four is the tricky one. I, I'm not sure whether they'll keep Toa there or whether they'll uh, they'll move Toa out to five, which I think is possible is a possibility there. They may bring uh, Ollie back into four and bump Toa out onto the wing. Do we think Toa's more of a center or more of a winger? Might have to pull you up there. Carla reckons that Madge said. Jakey and Kenny are actually okay. Ken- Jakey was on crutches. Jakey's okay. Oh, yeah. Are you sure, Carl? On on TV. TV. No, I, was, I, was, I read a thing um, from the NRL physio saying that it's so. Oh, it's just like the normal. Like he just rolled an ankle. He goes, it's going to look worse, okay, but it will get better quick. Usually it's like a few weeks out. I think Madge is, Madge is pretty conservative. If you'll end up going mm-hmm. Garner at center, Tower at wing, which yeah. isn't, you know, at least it plugs a hole and Toe is safe under a high ball, but you know, we lose a bit of attack. That's all, but there's nothing wrong with that. I don't want to penalise Garno. It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, Luke in the comments suggested Junior Tupo coming up. I, yeah, I haven't seen enough of him. I don't know how he If we could actually it. watch the New South Wales Cup, yeah, nice. it was actually televised. Yeah, we got, we got I reckon that's ridiculous. Yeah, oh, look, I don't think we've won a game, have we? Yeah, we had a few blokes dropping back from... Well, that's that's the thing. Like, grade, and it still didn't help. Yeah, but the thing is, like, most of that team is the Jersey flag team from the year before. Mm. They're all super young. And we don't have guys like um, Fitzgibbon on the wing or who was the centre? Um, guy I like. I'm trying to think of his name. I've got a brain fart. I was looking at Kai his. Cooper, Kai Cooper. Kai Cooper, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Like, we don't have boys like that. I, I don't know why. And there's, there's a few players that I'm, I'm a bit shocked we did move on because from what we saw when we watched them live and – just bits and pieces you get through. They were excellent. But, yeah, our, our young team's a lot of Jersey Fleet players. Apparently, Zach Senior like, was playing for Para today. He is, yeah. So, <laughs> from Cronulla to Para. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I think I was... Yeah. Three I, teams I, in two months. Me. You're telling me. You can yeah. tell, tell me. So, <laughs> say it into the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> got a, like One of my mates was talking about it, and he reckons it's attitude. Mm. So, he was saying that 
Sini, um, after that first game he played against the Dragons, sort of got a bit of a, a bit of a big nut, a big head, and um, yeah, just supposedly at the Sharks was just throwing it around, and um, they just couldn't be bothered. No, like, fuck See that. Later. I don't want to deal with it. Yeah. And uh, now he's playing for Parramatta, and I've heard that Parramatta aren't too happy with his attitude either. Mm. And that's from someone who knows people he plays with. So, yeah, right. Uh, Brett in the comments suggested Peachy. Of course, Peachy. Of course, didn't play today. Peachy yeah, Peachy too. in the centres yeah. kind of makes. That's that. It was, it makes yeah, sense. You, you, got, you got a bit more speed. Yeah, Garner. Yeah, that that could work too. Um, thanks for that, Brett. You just, point. yeah, you, in one word, just made us all look like, like, look like, like fools. Yeah. yeah, we should have thought I of f- Peach. I forgot about Peach. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> he exists. Like, oh, <laughs> right, uh, number six, who of course today was good old Brooksy. Brooksy moved to number six. It actually did seem to make a difference. I thought he had a really, really good game, apart from goal kicking his side. Um, so he had three runs, 24 meters, nine con- post contact meters, two line break assists, two try assists. Uh, we've already talked about that beautiful rainbow pass earlier. Uh, dummy half runs, he had one, even though he played the last 20 minutes in dummy half for six meters, no offloads, 50 passes, 30 tackles from Brooksy, missed six. And error-wise, he oh, kick meters 310 from seven kicks. And no errors from Brooksy. Boys, I think Brooksy had possibly his best game. Not that it's a high bar. Rob, I reckon Brooksy had his best game of the year as well. Do you think a lot of it's having Hastings with him? Definitely having Hastings. I think, I, I don't know why, but it just seemed like to him, the shackles had been taken off. Even though really it doesn't make too much difference. I mean, there were a couple of times on our right side attack where Hastings came across on the same side as the Brooks. So, like, Brooks is never normally on the right-hand side. He's normally a left half. So we, we really played the traditional half 5 eight sort of role back from the 80s and 90s. Um, I'm just really happy for him, to be honest. Like, yeah, I hate having to criticise him. I love the bloke. And it just pains me to be critical of anyone in the club. And I just think today is a really bloody good day for Luke Brooks. I'm just happy for, for him, for his family, for, you know, and, and you know, the, the knockers have got every right to have knocked him. But, you know, let's hope, you know, this can sort of keep going on in the future. And I'll tell you what, it'd be, it'd be a nice headache to have if Hastings and uh, Brooks are playing like they did today and Adam comes back because then as much as Adam's our best 5'8", the way our centres look, he'd, he'd plug a centre hole straight away. I'll be honest. After today, I don't know if he's our best five eight. Because oh, look, what out I, of sight, out of mind, brother. What I, uh, what what, I like what I saw, like from Brooksy, man, that, that was perfect. Yeah, giving him that extra few seconds, the inside ball to Jimmy. Yeah, I noticed that three or four times. He he would run out and then just do the pop back straight to Jimmy, and Jimmy would be full charge running, and like. Like we've been talking about our attack, saying how crab wise we won. And, you know, like two weeks ago, we both said, you know, we've got to straighten up the attack. Like the first try we got with Noffa today, Jacko gets the ball, straightens up, gives it, gives it to Brooksy, a little bit of an angle, then straightens up and then puts it through to Luch. You know mm. what I mean? Like it was just, we straightened up our attack. We froze them out. We could, then we had options to go, go around them, long face ball, chip over the top. We started looking it's like a, every other freaking team in the comp. We had them standing still. We had them standing we still, had exactly. Standing we, still. we had them second guessing. And and that just comes with straightening up the attack. And, you know, it all starts from dummy half. So they, they got really good service today and just happy for all of them, man. It was just like, you know, that's what I'm talking about, as they say. Like, where's that been? Seriously. Well, it was just time. Yeah. Let's be honest. Like, you give Brooks that extra second or two to make the right decision. Yeah. And he makes it. As soon as the pressure's on him, he bums it. And we've, that's what we've seen the whole time. Like, he, he freaks out. We'll do something silly. Whereas now it's almost like, sweet, it's not on me. We've been saying this for years. He's not a halfback. He's a running 5'8". Today proved it. And Brooks can't say that he's a halfback. Because that's what he always he said, said on it two months ago on the pod. I, I told Josh about it earlier in the week. Yeah. On on in the media, he's always no, nah, no. Nah, I'm a halfback through and through. I'm definitely a halfback. Sorry, man, you've just proved yourself wrong. <laughs> because I like that was his best performance for, 
as long as I can remember. The thing with Brooksy, if he does something wrong, everyone wants to hang him on it, even when he does a lot of good things. Now, I'm not bagging Jacko at all, but with five minutes left, he had a field goal there for his taking and he put the kick over the dead ball line. Mm. Now, if that was Brooks, he would have been... Yeah, that's a good point. Oh, he would have been hung. He would have been hung from wherever they would. And I don't care care that he set up two tries. Look what he freaking did at the end of the game. Jacko did the same same thing, guys, but he made up for it with the... Ice breaking long range field goal. Hey, that's all heart too. Yeah, that's, that was. Yeah, oh. You just wanted it. I love it. Aaron, any any thoughts on Brooksy? I pretty much agree with everything you guys said. Yeah, it's, I think it's rough. I take on Brooksy you last. Man, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to disagree. <laughs> you guys are just you guys are just on a roll. I'm just letting you guys revel in the moment. Honestly, I'll go to you. I'll go to you first. Next player, <laughs> Brooksy. Yeah, absolutely outstanding game for from him. He he stepped up and. He's he's definitely that player who can do with that few extra seconds that being in the six gives him. While Jacko's better at the the quick rapid fire decisions, um, we saw he, him get a few of those absolutely bang on today. And then just yeah, Brooksy having that extra little bit of time to go over it, make sure he's making the right one, worked out so much better for him. Uh, we we had scored what six tries in five games or something like that to get four of them today would do the team a whole lot of confidence. And also, I just want to mention the footage. uh, I think it was on Benji's show post 360 uh, of the team welcoming Brooksy back into the sheds uh, as he came in. It was so good seeing the whole entire team get around him and just that that warmed my heart. It just filled my heart with so much joy. That's awesome. Can't wait to see that. Uh, we have the ability to share videos as long as they don't have music or anything. So if anyone wants to tweet us or something, we'll see if we can share that on the on the podcast. Uh, number seven, of course, Jackson Hastings. We kind of gone to him already, but um, you Aaron to go at it. He, uh, <laughs> Aaron's got first yeah, Aaron, Aaron, can, Aaron can have first dibs at Hastings. Yeah, How's that man of the match to go talk about now, mate? So he obviously <laughs> kicked a goal. Oh, he now he now 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 a sideline conversion too. Like that was. Uh, Straight over just, the black dot, wasn't yeah. it? Obviously, uh, I was in the opposite corner. I couldn't tell. I just saw the flags go up. It's um, amazing how much you, it was worth being there, though. It's amazing how much you missed compared to TV, though. Just to rub it into some Eels fans would have been. <laughs> oh, it was it was so good. Like uh, shouts to how salty um, were they on the way out? Oh, it was so good watching them work. Like, and the um, shouts to the the fanatics guys. With the drums and stuff, because they were, yeah, chanting West Tigers and stuff as they were walking out, and they were hating it. And um, I'm at half mass thinking about it again. Uh, Forty <laughs> Jackson Hastings had fourteen. <laughs> I thought you were in the room now. <laughs> uh, don't we don't don't want the stream to go down. Uh, fourteen runs for ninety five run meters. Uh, Twenty one post contact meters. Try assists. Uh, uh, one dummy half a run for nine meters, two offloads. Boys, you're on mic. I'm trying to <laughs> behave. Uh, 19 tackles, two missed, uh, eight kicks, two forced dropouts, which is big for us. Uh, one only or two handling errors from Jackson. Righto, Aaron, you're first up. Josh, the pick behind you says it all. Uh, absolute resurrection. We definitely missed him the last three weeks. It was one of those decisions from Madge that was either going to go very, very right or very, very wrong. Thankfully, it went very, very right. Absolute excellent man of the match performance. He he did make that error, um, I guess error, late in the game. Right, I, It got to the point where I was starting to be like, we're not going to blow this again, are we? And then, yeah, nailed it in the end. I... I was so stoked for him as well. Um, the way he spoke in the press con and not the press conference in the um, post match chat with the 360 boys as well. Absolute class from him. Uh, the team they got around him. He he carried the team on his back today. Made good decisions. Made a couple of bad ones, but the good ones, honestly, I reckon more than made up for it. Just stunning performance. Absolute stunning. Uh, boys, who wants to go first? Jackson. Uh, I did not expect him to do that after three weeks out. 
like that was huge. I, I know what he can bring to the team, but to have missed three games and to do what he did today, with the exception of that little brain fade five minutes before the end, it was outstanding. He, he really imposed his will on the game. Uh, everyone followed his lead. It was just a Herculean performance. I love that Aaron got to see everything after full time. I was going off like a freaking firecracker, man. I did not see one interview, <laughs> one anything. I've been on bouncing up and down. My neighbours think I'm a freaking lunatic. Um, I was yeah, going off too. Just, I it, just, it was just yeah. fantastic. But, yeah, <laughs> a great game. He straightened our attack up, basically. He took the role of all the big decisions, and he'll only be better for it. And I just hope, you know, the boys will really start believing this. We've, we've lost so many games in a row now, and we got so used to losing. Now that we've finally won one, I just think maybe this is the kick we need just to to kick on with it. Like, you know, like a few days ago, I'm thinking, when are we going to get our first win? Now I'm looking at the table. I'm like, we're four points out of the eight. <laughs> yeah, so it's a big change in, change in uh, attitude and what have you. So that, you know that's what? all I've got to say on it. If we play how we played today, we'll win the next two, next three. If we play how we played today. Because, um, like, I'll be honest, I said this at the beginning of the year. Like, I'm actually shocked that he isn't in the leadership group. Because I personally, with Adam being out, I thought he would be our captain. He should be now. And he is our captain. I don't care who Madge picks. I don't care. Doesn't matter. He's the captain of the team. And he's the captain of the ship. And look, you're steering us in all the right directions today. And um, as Aaron said before, he makes those snap decisions of where to go. First receiver, it's either fight or flight. And... It was all fight today. And he's and, the sort of guy too. He'll still be there at the ground signing autographs and taking photos. Like He, just, he gets the crowd involved as well. He's just a club man. Well, he was walking through. around the whole whole time. Like I was watching oh, after. What he did after the game. Yeah, yeah I was watching NRL 360 for a little bit. And yeah, he was just there signing autographs, talking to people. Yeah. And like, to be honest, that's, let's be honest, guys. That's, that's what we've missed. That is what we've missed. And um, understanding. Can we say it's a great yeah, signing now, voice. officially? Man, I, I said this last year. You did. As soon as I knew that we were signing him, there you go. straight away, I knew this was going to... This this was a superstar signing. I, I don't care if people... People were giving me shit about it. No, nah, whatever, whatever. He's not going to be that good. How his attitude is and was in Super League and him bringing that same attitude here, that, that's all I wanted. It was the attitude. His playing speaks for itself. We know he's good. It wasn't that he wasn't good enough for NRL. He was. His attitude let him down. And he said that plenty of times on plenty of podcasts. Yeah. This is what we've needed. There's a reason Sheensy made him captain of the All-Stars versus England team. Look, like... The thing if, is... That if Sheens is giving him captaincy, like, how do you... He's in the same team as the club as him now. Like the funny thing is, he, he got suspended for three weeks, and we ended up zero and five, and we had Brooks and Madden in the halves. I think the fact that he had three weeks out, and that basically that combination has kind of officially failed. Although I think Madden kind of played pretty well for a few weeks. I, agree. I, I think the yeah. fact that they both played half, Hastings had to come back as a half. Had he been in the team the whole time, he'd probably be the ball playing lock or, or, or the five eight or the second receiver, and Madge might not have changed it. But I think it just made Madge even realise even more. Well, I've got to change this. Those three weeks, he was in the box with Madge. Yeah. What other player does that? Let's well, be, let's be honest. Adam like, Blahey when he's around. We yeah. saw Jimmy there. Yeah. For that one game, yeah. Jimmy was on his phone, fat assing about. You can care. <laughs> but at the same time, he doesn't need to be there. Yeah. He's a center. Yeah. Get the ball, and run. Yeah. <laughs> when someone's running out, you tackle. <laughs> it's that simple. Hastings was in there. The whole time you, you you'd flick up. He'll be talking to match. Yeah. He is the man to give the orders on the field. And, and that's it. And I think those three weeks upstairs of him looking down on the team going, look, these are the issues that we've got. This is this is how we have to face them. And I think seeing the failure of the last three games, especially from up top in the coaching box, I reckon he might have said stuff to Madge as well. And he would have said stuff because I don't think he's shy. I don't, yeah. I don't like if he sees something wrong. I think he's just going to go. 
hey man, look, maybe we should try this. And it was a master stroke. Like we beat Eels who have the best attack in the whole comp. Like they literally have the best attack. They, they were like statistic wise, they were better than Melbourne. Ours was pretty good today. And I reckon today ours, like this is all I said. I just want to score some points. We've had three tries in three games. Just put some points on. Like I thought we were going to get thrashed. I did. I didn't think we get thrashed. I just saw it where we're going to get what, our points seven, from. Seven bucks at the sports bet. Ten bucks. Nine. Ten bucks. It was nine and ten dollars on out. some of them. Yeah, and pushed out in ten just before kick off. I was, I, I was worried. Like <laughs> the Eels have been good, but as we always see and as we always joke, Moses crumbled. <laughs> That, that that last little those, that last Finally. 10, 15 minutes, he he wasn't as potent. There was he he was stressing like he had that pressure on him, and he does like we know that he struggles under pressure, and that that like, that drop goal was possibly one of the easiest positions to put it like you're dead center. I don't know if you remember the <laughs> Titans game in two thousand and seventeen when Jared Haynes said. This is my house, you know, at Campbelltown. Oh, yes. yeah. Okay, that was a similar this, this game to what Moses had, like missing penalty goals, missing that easy field goal, working the play to the wrong side of the ruck. But to his credit, he was actually a pretty good sport after the game, I thought. I, I can't stand the bloke, but I thought he showed a lot of maturity in his post-match interview that I saw. And even Clint Gutherson, like when Jake Simpkin got injured, he gave him a pat on the back and said, hope you're okay, mate. I thought it was pretty good sportsmanship. Oh, I, I, still I know you hate me. <laughs> I, know that. I, know that. I wish I was there to do the old oh, Guthrie. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what, about hey, the what about him yes, talking smack? Number two. What about him talking... <laughs> After he just got crunched by Dane Laurie, he started talking smack <laughs> when Kenny dropped the ball. He started talking smack. On the left side? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, mate, you just got no, crunched. No. Like, what are you talking smack well, for? He's got some balls. He's got some balls. We'll give him that, but... I still hate him. <laughs> hey, Shane, I just hate anyone. The... Oh, you go, Garen. Did you catch the part of 360 where uh, they were interviewing Hastings and he he told them to lay off Brooks for the week? Yeah. No, I didn't hear that. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, great. That was good. Well, I think even Mitch Moses said Brooks was the best player on the field today, but that's one of his best mates. So no, but even, even Hastings said, and he's man of the match, Luke Brooks, and got him over to do an interview on 360. Ah, okay. It was good. <laughs> that's smart. <laughs> they missed so much, Ben, at the game. I don't recommend it. I didn't hear it, so you know that. <laughs> <laughs> Buy season if tickets and miss all this shit. No, if it's an away game, I love watching it from home. You see those little bits and pieces, so... Uh, right, out, moving on to the forward. So, Jimmy Tarmow, I thought Jimmy... Possibly had his best game of the year. 45 minutes. Uh, he had 15 runs, 125 metres, 48 post-contact, which I think is the most. No, Alex 12 slightly more, but up there as well. Tackle breaks, two. Um, 13 hit-ups. Play the ball. Was, was it Jimmy? You always said the play the ball's the quickest. So 3.2. Uh Come to a lug, he says one point eight. That can't be right. Um, I did. I did notice a few of the boys getting up really quick. It's like a form, like, Formula One pit stop. Like I prop, I noticed like a lot of speed in our play the balls, mm. and that was like a few times I was a bit like, Ooh. hopefully they're listening to me. Three. <laughs> Hopefully, the, the, all the things we're predicting have come true. So, or most of them, anyway. Three offloads, thirty-three tackles, three missed, and any errors? No, no errors from Jimmy. I thought it was one of the his best games um, of the season, especially attacking wise. Rob, I thought he looked really dangerous, so like it's, almost prime James Tarmel. It's his best game for the club, and like mm. I said to you earlier, you could say that about eight or eight or nine of the guys. That's their best game this year. Definitely his best game. I know he talks a good game, but I think the last few weeks he's really had a go, like even in, in some losing efforts. So good on him. He's he's being the captain we probably want him to be last year, to be to be fair. But he's a great bloke. You can never question the bloke off the field, but well, on the field. He's probably he's... feeling comfortable. That's the thing. Like he now knows the boys, and yeah. I think he now doesn't feel like he's sort of stepping over people. Well, he doesn't look like the guy that I thought at the end of last year he's just going to get his. 2022 year out of the way and and you know retire and off in the sunset it looks like he's got another year in him 
you know, if he keeps going like this, he's he's really outstanding today. But you could say that about just just about everyone. Literally, yeah. there's probably two forwards that were a little bit lazy in the middle a couple of times. But other than that, it was just – you can't fault the effort, man. It was just such no. a good team effort. They just worked their asses off. You mentioned the rotation earlier, Josh. I don't have the rotations in front of me. I thought there was a distinct lack of rotation. I just felt like the same blokes were out there the whole time and, and not much was getting changed up. So whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I really don't care this week because we won. But, yeah, I don't think there was – that the rotation was that great, to be honest, anyway. But hey, who gives a shit? We won. That's it. Yeah. No, I thought, man, my boy Jimmy. You do love him. Did you send him a text after the game? I haven't yet. No. Only when we oh, lose. Get him one now. <laughs> send him a text, see if he'll come on. I have to, I have to watch the. Um... Send him a text. Send him a link, see if he can come on the show. Yeah, I'll send him a message now. But after this one, I, I love that little inside play that he was doing with Brooksy the whole game, like that. They, they just weren't reading it. Like it kept happening, and it just kept doing the same thing. And he was making 10, 15 meters off it. And I'm like, idiots! It's happened five times. You can see it covered. Like I'm like, oh sweet, Brooks is going to do that little pop off bang and boom. Hastings did the same thing. Like it was actually telegraphed, and yet they were still working. Yeah, but those inside balls were just working. Rose of Oz made a good point too. The penalty towards the end, if he's quick, play the ball. Yeah, they got us a penalty. Yeah, that was a big play. Anything else to add? Aaron are giving you the scraps again, or the boys are giving you the scraps again there. But um, anything to add on Jimmy? No, nothing, nothing really to add. Absolutely, his best game for the for the club. Honestly, he's only what 32, 33 maybe. He's same age as me, born eighty eight, but yet to turn thirty four, I think. Yeah, righto. Maybe he would have another year left in him if he uh, if he keeps yeah, going young. well this year. Uh, yeah, he's an 88 baby like me. I'm pretty sure August. Um, righto, Jakey Simkin, speaking of young, 58 minutes for Jakey Simkin, 25 total points, eight runs for 67 metres, uh, 11 post-contact metres, four hit-ups, three dummy half runs for 26 metres, 57 passes, uh, 31 tackles, four missed, and error wise, I gave away two penalties. Oh, we already did Simkin, didn't we? We did, we did. But See, this, yeah, we, I think <laughs> I already did. Sorry, we're, this job? <laughs> That's all right. We already did him. I was like, I swear I've read these before. How do I know these so well? All right, he and showed he, us his potential today, and that's what all we wanted to see. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that's why you, 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 that's why you can't go out of order, boys. You can't go out of order. Zane Musgrove. I'm going to say Musgrove, number 10. Number 10 in the uh, jersey order. So he had 14 runs for 127 metres, 36 kick returns somehow, 45 post-contact, uh, 11 hit-ups, one offload, 26 tackles, three missed, and any penalties from no penalties from Zane? That's pretty good for uh, for him. Aaron, I'll let you go first with Zane. Uh, any thoughts? Yeah, maybe a bit um, harsh, but he was probably the weakest link on the team today. I reckon. Luke uh, in the comments yeah, is with, agreeing. With I you agree there, with yeah. Luke. Yeah, uh, that missed tackle on. Uh, was it Dylan Brown? Dylan, yeah, Dylan Brown. That was that was soft as butter. The way he led him through and uh, sent Marnie over for a try. That was piss poor effort, honestly. Just not the sort of stuff you need in your team. Uh, carrying the ball, he didn't do that poorly, but I w- I would say he was probably the weakest link in the team today. Two ago. Yeah, I agree. Look, I, I think that's being a bit harsh, though, because our weakest link wasn't weak. That's it. I was about to say, our weakest link wasn't weak. <laughs> no. But he definitely uh, was I, our weakest forward. Of the, of the I, I, I agree with what Aaron's saying there about the Dylan Brown break. If you break that actual play down, he got through because Zane Musgrove just shot up too quick, was way too enthusiastic. So it wasn't a lazy tackle. It was more like he just charged up too quick. And look, I actually said to who was, I can't remember who I was speaking to, which son it was of mine, but it was like, basically, we don't want, I don't want uh, Musgrove and I don't want um, 
uh, Thomas McKayley on the field at the same time because they've just got this. Like if McKayley had just covered that inside a bit quicker, there, there might not have been a hole there as well. I just they give like you a bit. Of, they give you a bit of a heart attack. They do. They're just like they 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 can just go a little bit AWOL sometimes in where they should be. But look, I actually thought he played pretty well. But you know, obviously we're going to highlight that that break. But that he just shot up too quick. That's all it was. And and, and our markers were being lazy and no one cover the hole on the inside. But other than that, I thought he played okay. And, and if that's if if our weakest link plays like that every week, we're going to be winning more games than we lose because I actually thought he had a pretty good game. Yeah, exactly. Well, he ran almost 130 metres. Like, yeah. that, no one did good. last week. That's, <laughs> that's, that's good. Like, yeah. run 130 metres, like, you can't knock that. Yeah. Like, he ran for metres and he did good post-contact. Like, he made a mistake. And that's probably what has caused him to be the weakest link in a very good team tonight. Yeah. Like, we played very good. We played Parramatta's game. Yeah. We, we let them think they had their bits and pieces running out wide. Yeah. Bang, shut them off. And that's, that's what we did the whole time. And they were throwing stupid balls, trying to get out there quick and rushing their plays. And we had it covered. And that's really, like, we were letting them play out to the edges get their wingers involved in the game and they were overplaying their hand and they were throwing forward passes. They were throwing stupid balls to people who were never going to catch it. So. Just got a tweet from a uh, friend of the show, Connor. So if you haven't noticed yet, myself and Rob are wearing our new polos. They were, they were from Connor. So he, oh, Connor from Dynasty. Yours there, mate. Yeah, yours is. Oh, it's over there. <laughs> I brought it for you. Shane's going to get his shirt off. Put our new shirt on, but uh, shouts to Connor for hooking us up with uh, Westlife branded polos. So we're um, we look professional. They're they're nice and light. Yeah, you know some polos, especially some West Tigers polos. You know they get really hot. This is actually quite nice. It fits nice and well. So shouts Connor and uh, Dynasty for hooking us up there. They um, do the jerseys for Manly and a couple other teams. But um, if Stephen, if you're listening. Sorry, you are uh, a little bit late. You've been Shane's horsing. given us a strip show. It's been, a, it's been what a night! What a night! <laughs> Here he is. No, you're not right a smile off my face today. Let Hasn't had as many away. drinks as he did hat, the other, the other game go. of Combank. No, no. <laughs> I'm going bald. We're both wearing the training shorts too. Yeah. It. Uh, wear wear the gear you're loud and proud. Going on there, that's great. Yeah, yeah, your mate Dima Stone. We'll um we'll promote anyone, away. anyone that loves the West Tigers. Uh, Joseph, ask Arlo for sale. Uh, I don't know. I'll ask Connor if he wants to make a side hustle and sell some Westlife shirts. I didn't think anyone will want some, but um, I'll speak to Connor after the show, Joe. See if we can hook you up. Uh, righto, who's next in the pecking order? It was Kelmart to a luggy. He played 80 minutes at 11. Uh, He had 14 runs, 127 metres, 36 kick return metres, 45 post contact. Sorry, only six. Sorry, I read the wrong line then. Five runs for 18. Only six post contact metres, five hit ups, three offloads, two passes, seven receipts, 30 tackles, two missed. Any errors from Kelma? No, but he got put on report for something. Oh, yeah, probably because he hurt um, old Nathan Brown a bit too much and hurt his feelings. So. <laughs> what did he get put on report for? I missed that. I, I think he was the one who got put on report a late tackle on Mitch Moses, but which yeah, honestly well, didn't look was very late. late. Yeah, was no, that it was wasn't late. He was absolutely. he was in the process of making the tackle and there was no way in hell he was able to pull out of it. So... That's what he was put on report for. And the worst part about that, Mitch Moses had run the ball twice and done big steps off his right foot, and he's literally just passed the ball. Like, it's almost instant. But slow motion just makes it look like there's a second delay when there wasn't. That ref was yeah. shit. He was absolute. Oh. We, he only ref one team today, as usual. Yeah. I'm just sick of it. I spoke to my, I spoke to my dad on the way home, and he said to me, like, because the refereeing in the first half was like it just seemed like Parramatta were getting all the fifty all the fifty fifty calls were going to yeah, them. We were just on the back call. foot. Not the yeah. fifty fifty. They the were six agains, the penalties. The I just felt like we had to almost dive off the tackle player. You know, we're going to get penalised. Like yeah, quickly roll yeah off like and... roll off, or you're going to get pinged. Where with them, it was just like nothing. They were laying on us. Yeah. 
So yeah, right. if you if you want them, I've got the penalty count and the set restart count. Uh, we conceded four set restarts. Para conceded one. And that one they conceded was the final tackle of the game before Hastings <laughs> slotted the field goal. Of course. <laughs> the penalty count ended up being us conceding six and them conceding four. Yeah, even that. I mean, there was that a crucial second, one. That second half, I noticed we were getting we were getting a few penalties. Yeah, maybe. Mm. I think it, I think there. it was like four no, to get, one we, at halftime. We got four. We got four. We got four, we? four to four to six. Yeah, that's what Aaron just said. Yeah. Not a fan of the refs. Ever. Well, who's a good? Who's the best ref in the NRL right now? Uh, trick question. <laughs> against, against the Tigers, no one. <laughs> no, against us, we're just not. You know. I've just seen it all weekend. I saw the Warriors get absolutely roared here. So if that was the Tigers, I reckon I would have driven down to the MCG, uh, SCG and done something. Mm -hmm. oh, that was just disgraceful. But Look, I'll, I'll be honest. Every week to the week teams, guys. I've said it. I've said it all this year. That's I'm really struggling to watch footy. I really am. Because it's just such a shit show. They get new refs in, refs that we haven't seen before. We're like, oh, sweet. This is going to be all right. Like, and then all of a sudden, bang, Lucha's try doesn't go up and... The next week, another try doesn't go up, and it's just like, man, it's just. So I, don't, I don't know if you caught the other games this weekend, Josh, but like, a couple. The, Teddy, Teddy did an automatic sin bin for a leg pull. Uh, yeah. Ryan Pappenhausen, you know, in a try scoring situation, uh, hit uh, Mulatalo, and they just turned out to be penalties. Where yet Peachy does a second push against the Gold Coast, like a second yeah. push, and he's automatically in the bin. Where these are try scoring opportunities and. I don't know, man. Anyway, the inconsistency. Let's be happy about the win, boys. Keep it on the win. That's it. Keep it on the win. <laughs> Screw the refs. Uh, righto. Who's next in the? We have Luciano Leilua. Of course, it is. Uh, so eighty minutes. Of course, scored the first try of the game. Uh, I always put money on him to score first and didn't today, unfortunately. Um, six runs for 72 metres, 24 post-contact, one line break, five tackle breaks, six hit-ups, uh, one offload, 29 tackles, two missed, and any errors from Luch? One handling error from Luch. I think that was when he was, he was hitting a hole near the line and it just popped straight out. It was a pretty bad one. From Luch, but um, I underplayed him earlier in the year. I I'm gonna I hold us hold I hold a high standard for him. I don't think it was his best game. I think he was pretty good. They started off pretty well. Am I wrong? That's your opinion. I, I look. I'm, yeah. I'm going to end up giving Hastings man of the match, but Luch was the best player on the field. He was the best forward. He was dangerous. Field. He looked dangerous. But he just was thought he was the best yeah. forward yeah. on the field. He offloaded at will. Para Paras are renowned for their second phase footy, and I'm thinking like we're not doing any second phase footy. How are we going to score tries? All of a sudden, he was just in beast mode today. Like I, I, I can't give him man of the match, but he, I actually think it's his best game out of the six, and he's been our best player all year. I've given him three points nearly every week. Well, that's just, it. He's passing the ball. That's the difference. Yeah, he's, he's moving he the, ball the face ball and offer today. Did you see that? Yeah, I but he, like he's he's not trying to do that silly hold. This is this is what scares me with Luch. Every time he gets the ball, grabs it in the left hand, runs hard, and just looks for that silly around the back pop yeah, pass. Does. And it's just like, dude, just stop. Pass the ball a little bit earlier. Get some ball to like. I just think he was the most dangerous forward on the field today. Josh. Yeah, I'm not saying it's his best. Well, look game, at his but, try. But like when you got, he was you know, good. I'm saying he's good. It's just Lee and all yeah. these other guys, Sean Lyons yeah. and and you know Campbell Gillards and whatever. And he, and he just he even tackled in the middle for a bit today too. It was a good game. It was good yeah. to say it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't. A, it wasn't a luch game. Yeah, I, I thought the try was good, I but I don't know. Like I, oh, I didn't think it was a luch game. I think it was. A luch okay. game. I think it was a luch okay. game, but no, no disrespect. It's just yeah, yeah. Yours, I mean, you know, we again, I was high up in the TV stands and replays. Yeah, at the game, it's it's very hard when you're at the game looking. Yeah, and going, oh yeah, like you see I probably didn't a few bits and pieces, but I probably thought I loved him. I absolutely loved him. When, when they're at the other end of the field, I probably thought on the field getting him mixed up. Oh yeah, I agree. Like he definitely was. Um, the fact he's passing. Gives me great joy <laughs> because that's what we need. <laughs> we need him to pass the ball. Like, that's yes, he's a damaging runner, but the thing, he's a damaging runner, which means he's going to draw defense in. 
if he can just run and just pass that ball that little bit earlier, get Roberts running. Look at Roberts. Like he got those offloads away today that he normally doesn't do on the right side. I've been begging for him to be on the left, but to his credit, he got the offloads away today. Popping at the Jimmy yeah. Noffa, yeah, like, everyone. And look, that's that's what we've needed from him, and and that has been my my gripe with him. Just yeah. like, why is he not passing the ball? Yeah. He's he's taking runs and trying to do really like low percentage offloads. Yeah. And now he's getting those passes and he's getting in good positions for offloads. He's not trying to wrap his hand around the back of someone. He's he's running in, back in, right hand out. Yeah. And that left hand out. That whole just, run on off Brooksy today was just oh like I jumped off the lounge. <laughs> Rose, Rose of Oz made a good point. He said it was a Luch game, just a lot of other players stepped up. So maybe yeah. I'm just I just think he was the most dangerous yeah. bloke. It took two or three blokes to well, look, him every time. It's the same as Musgrove. Yeah. Like Musgrove was still great. Yeah. But Musgrove still just, played well. He just didn't look as good as the rest. Yeah. That's it. And Aaron from the bounce of the ball. He said he just didn't stand out like usual and everyone around him stepped up to his level. So maybe that's why. Enough. Maybe. Yeah. Aaron, what are your thoughts on Luch today? Watching him actually take a bit of time thinking about the offloads before making them instead of just getting the ball out of there for the hell of it was probably the best thing for me. Uh, instead of just throwing it away, he was actually thinking about where who am I giving this to? Uh, and that was a lot better. Uh, did you guys, honestly, did you guys think his try was going to be overturned or did you think it was going to result in a no try? Because uh, he played for the West Tigers, I thought it might have been, but I thought <laughs> he didn't. He didn't promote the ball. He kept. He didn't. It was a roll. Like, yeah, he kept was momentum. Like, yeah. He didn't stop moving. Exactly he, like and he didn't. Said, he didn't promote the ball. Opacek yeah. was on him the whole time. Opacek had his jersey, and and that's what they were saying. If Opacek got off and he did the old, I, I actually thought whoever had him around the legs let go. Not that it mattered no. because as Josh said, he, he didn't stop. Over, but but the first thing you know when it's the West Tigers, Opacek just had his jersey the whole time, even when he rolled over. I was nervous. Yeah. I thought it's it's a try, but I was nervous because well, it's West Tigers. The commentators were saying no try. West Tigers had a no try go up that was ruled a try. It just doesn't oh. happen to us. Like seriously. Yeah. Oh, that Obviously, went up as a no try. Yeah, it went up as a no try. Yeah. So yeah. then then my hopes were even worse. So it's just like <laughs> it's an Easter miracle. Right. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> We've got a good call from the bunker. Yeah, What's happening? Call, yeah, the commentators were saying definitely no try. So that was really oh, wow. interesting thing. I didn't yeah. Hear that. Well, because he's because he's um he had his had the ball in his right hand, elbow touched the ground, but the thing was he didn't make any extra movement. Yeah, he didn't promote the ball. No, no, it was no, literally yeah. he got rolled. He kept a tuck. And it tuck. Was just, oh, yeah. normally when it's the arm the arm hitting the ground with the ball hits the ground, that's it. But yeah. I think that was yeah, well, that's, that was on his left leg. Uh, Ro Rhodes Voss says it right. Said it right. What was that? Brown came in, yeah. which knocked him for like yeah. over the try line. So, yeah. and that's what they were saying. Like there was momentum. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize it was that close. The commentators were. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> for us, it was yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, it's just one of those days. Like it's been a year where everything has gone wrong. Today, apart from a little bit of refereeing, but everything. Well, seemed I to go he right. Was trying to us. get him in the game as hard as he could, and I was, oh, I was just yeah. looking at it going. I was on the plane, and I was fuming, and I'm like sitting there. Just going, oh, I, just, I can't say. It was literally the only way. With, with I was that about to frisbee my phone to the front of the plane. <laughs> with that ref, it was the only way we were going to win the game too. Like you know, like in basketball, like like you know, literally like the last shot of the game and no time left on the clock. Yeah, hundred percent. Bit like Tatum for Boston today. We was kind of like that sort of game where yeah. we, we won on the hoover. They had no chance to do a short kickoff. Or I'll tell you something. You're gonna laugh at this. I don't even know what the full time score was because I don't know if it was a two or a one point field goal. Oh, I've just been. It was oh, a one. They, the they put it down as a two, but it was a one because it was. It doesn't 30, matter, does it? Was it yeah. Thirty-eight meters. Good thing, Matt. Yeah, he he had just barely stepped over the over the forty, which yeah made it a one pointer. Yeah, it was literally a step. And then he bounced it and booted it. Oh, let's hope we don't miss the eight by one they, point of they, they, they did put the graphic on the they, screen they as a two pointer, two, didn't they? Yeah. Say that again, Aaron. They put it uh the graphic on the screen. So in the ticker on the like the score ticker on the top left corner, they had two point field goal scroll across it. So I was thinking, great, we kicked a two pointer. Uh but yeah. then when I watched the replay and uh they started going to the post game interviews, I noticed they had swapped it back to a, a 21-20. So I was like, okay, he must have just stepped over. So then I jumped on yeah. NRL.com. I didn't even think of that. I was, I was just, like, oh, yeah, there you go. I was just jumping up with every other West Tigers fan going crazy. <laughs> it, 
I knew I knew straight. I could tell by you go by the reaction the fans behind the the posts as well. But I could tell even from I was literally the opposite corner. I could tell as soon as he nailed it. I thought like he he's hit this well. And oh man, it was. Oh, you put some gusto on that. Eh? <laughs> it was such a good man. It's one of where would this game go down? There's a lot of games that we remember for good reasons. This one, the way it finishes for Easter Monday, that's going to stick with me for a while. And honest, to me, it was one of our best because of how we've started the season. Yeah, really, like we're five. <laughs> I won five. We had a lot of great wins five. in 2005, 2010, 2011. This will be in our top 10 all mm. the time. And, and if you yeah. look back at it, depending on what happens, obviously, the next six weeks or so, it's probably the most important victory in Madge's coaching career. Mm. It's the most Luke important. Brooks. It, go, it goes now from, yeah. from Pasco leaving the club in crisis to him saying, what the hell was wrong with you guys? We, we, I knew we were going to win. I'm on holidays. <laughs> like every, Wait, <laughs> does, should Pasco stay on holidays then? Let's hope so. Was Pasco leaving the state? <laughs> Let's hope so. Maybe. But, like, no, it's just a good victory for everyone, man. It's a good victory for our fans, you know? Yeah. Just, I felt like, almost, not like I'm winning the grand final, but, it, like, it was... It was better. It was... Oh, it, was, it, was it wasn't better. It was but, relief. It was relief. It was a lot of relief. Like how, we, how we have started this season, we just needed one win. One. Because if we didn't get the win today, I don't reckon we roll on to win... Just picture Next how many Tigers fans are going to work tomorrow or the day after with big smiles on their face, shoulders Amazing. back, <laughs> big smile. On their I can walk into my office and see my my signed last year's jersey, and I can actually yeah. smile at it instead of wanting to throw it off the wall. <laughs> They're stuck <laughs> solid the whole way through. It's good, good for everyone. Good point from Mitch too. The beat the Eels at Para. Like they, they against most teams don't lose often there, and obviously Easter. I missed Easter. Four years ago, it was three. It was nineteen. Three years ago, it was nineteen. I wasn't. Yeah, I was in the Caribbean on a cruise ship, so I had completely missed that game. Thankfully, lucky you. Um, yeah, I literally. I've told. I think I've told this in the pod before. I literally raced off the boat, turned Wi-Fi on, I got a message from my dad like saying, "You don't want to know what the score is." It's um. Well, they rolled us last year. They rolled us in two thousand and nineteen when I think that that, that stand opened. Last but... year they kicked the ball out on the first. Kick and almost hit me. But the funny thing today was when when Jack <laughs> on Easter. Yeah, Easter. Yeah. So like I, I remember I was down. I was in the um. Oh, what is it? Shield of Honor. Oh yeah. They ran out. I was holding the sign. That's right. They kicked off, and it was out. Did not every like, one of you think when Jacko did the grubber kick with four minutes left and it went dead in goal? Did you all not think of two years ago when Benji did the same sort of? Kick oh no, I didn't. Because it was literally like he was like Benji orchestrated the comeback, like with twelve men, mind you, against thirteen. Yeah. Did everything right and then put the grubber kick in and blew it. I'm thinking, no, Jacko, you couldn't have done this. Is that against Benji. South? No, it was against Para. Para. It was against Para. Para. It was a nighttime game. Yeah, that was that was the last game of the. That was the one of the last few games. The last game of the season. That was the last game. That was Benji's last. Game. Benji's last game for the club. Yeah. I was I was there and I was. I thought well, we played. I feel like it was a few games from the end, but anyway. No, know. he played South last game. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that because my was son was, matter anyway. That my was son was born th that week. Oh, you can't. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we played yeah, South. I thought yeah. it was the last game of the season because I, I thought it was Benji's last game. And well, that's someone said, someone let us know what it was, guys. I, I'll look it up. I'm pretty sure it was like the third last game or something like that. It, it was the Eels in the last game of the season. Dewey got suspended in that for a shoulder charge on Sebo. Say, say that again. We're, we're talking that's, over you then, Aaron. Right. <laughs> it was the Eels in the last game of the season that year. That was 2020, the the 20 round season. Uh, yeah, because I I remember vividly in that game, Dewey ended up yeah, getting put on report and then suspended for a shoulder charge on Sebo. 28, 24. Yeah, I, I just remember my mate blowing oh, which makes up sense at me because he missed out the first game. Well, I just remember my mate blowing up at me that I didn't get him a ticket. Because okay. he, he was like, that's Benji's last game. You're a dog. Yeah. And I was just <laughs> that's what I remember. <laughs> it was part Yeah, I was sort of was South. Because, yeah, my son was born. So that game was on the 26th of September. My son was born on the 23rd. And I was trying to convince my wife to let me go. But with COVID and everything, she um, wouldn't let me. But I got a photo in front of the TV. Yeah. So my son got to see one Benji Marshall. Yeah. Well, it was <laughs> Tigers game. pumping Fergo that game. And Madison. For me. Shit. They, oh, <laughs> Madison. Looked at me once, and just like was standing as far away from mm -hmm. me as he could. <laughs> and I was just feeding him. Yeah, that's twenty twenty. Yeah, 
That was the for me the best part of that win. And I was right. just like, you are a maggot <laughs> screaming. Who's next, Josh? Uh, sorry, I was just read in the comments. You're right. Aaron, 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 Aaron. <laughs> yeah. How do you read that, man? Well, what will this, it's from Aaron, a bounce of the ball. So what will this game be known if, as in folklore? The Battle of Hastings, the Resurrection game. I called it, if you look on Twitter yesterday, I called it the Resurrection of Hastings. I called it, just call, who, uh, on call the me four, a, On the fourth saint. Madge rose from the dead. <laughs> 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 oh, was, was 100%. He was hanging on by a thread. Yeah. And uh, good on match too. He gave the players all of praise today afterwards. I heard, heard a bit of that. That's it. He didn't give himself yeah, anything. Yeah. It was all the players. But how and good is, was his reaction in the box? The oh, scenes of him celebrating that in the box. I thought Dwight was going to lose his other arm. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, he's going to tackle him. So do we call this AD for this season? Because <laughs> Jesus has come back. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Rono, who's Just next? Joppa. Sorry, guys. Just 15. before we move on. Yeah, go. Uh, the best part of that win, you were talking about it before, the best part of that win for me was the fact that we've been known as the team that can lose a game from any position at any state, like at any late stage of the game. It seemed like it was going to be another one of those ones with the two uh, Hastings dead, dead in goal uh, and the Mitch Moses barely missed field goal. And then to to pull it out of their asses, to bring it back out of the fire, I think that is probably the most important part of that win. Absolutely. Hopefully now the team have a lot more confidence going into our game against the Bunnies. Short turnaround, I think, is going to make, make it very interesting. But that is hopefully the confidence booster that they needed. Short turnaround might actually be okay because they'll be fired up. Well, look, we found a way to win. We're like we we don't know how to win at the moment, and we mm. found a way to win. And honestly, the monkeys off the back. I think we're sick of losing too, guys. We're sick of losing. I mean, look, it's hard to get up every week like that, but you know, because they are human well, beings, like you just can't be up every week. Well, every look week. at Joffa's interview last week. Yeah, that that told everything. And I'll be honest, you just brought up Joffa. Then I was I was super impressed today because he was probably one of the hardest hitting forwards this game. Like he was going off. Yeah. And like he wasn't doing silly stuff, like he was just tackling hard, and I noticed him in a lot of tackles. Playing lock, like you got to tighten up that middle. And I'll be honest, man, I was I was looking at him like he didn't. To me, he didn't stand out massively, but I was like, holy shit, he's in another tackle. Oh, bang, he's there as well. Like, and I just noticed him defensively. It was just bang, bang. He's almost like I don't. I'm trying not to make this an insult to either guy, but he's almost like a more talented Elijah Taylor. Like he's just that tough, hard tackling, just mean, reliable, just mean player. Yeah. He's also got that penalty in him though that you don't want him to do like the. So game. did Elijah Taylor. Yeah, Elijah Taylor had that Bryce too. Gibbs like and what have mm. you, but yeah, he tackled his ass off today. Let's, let's be honest, he wasn't most... in our top eight, I think, but like he was, he played well. I mean, after what he said last week, he's got enough credits with me to last the season, man. He put everyone on notice. I love that. Hundred percent, put himself on notice yeah. too, and look, he stepped up to it because today, like. I was impressed. Like I, I noticed Joffa in the middle defensively. I was like, "Holy shit, he's there again!" But oh, the thing is, Carrot didn't, Car didn't play bad. That's what I think is really good. Like they missed a couple of goals. They missed a field goal, but they didn't play badly. No, like this... it wasn't like they they shit themselves. Yeah, like, uh, we got lucky. You got to credit us for the win, well, not yeah, them for the loss. Like, yeah. This is what I was saying. Like we pushed Para to play their game, but play it rushed. Their completion was seventy percent. Yeah, that's shit house. Why was it 70%? It was because we were pushing them out wide, but we already had them trapped. Yeah. That's why it was 70%. So they were just throwing those stupid passes straight out. Yeah. Dropping the ball, just doing dumb shit. So like we let them play their game, let them think they were playing their game, just let them straight into a trap. And we seem to do it quite a lot on the edges and our edge defense has been shit. Yeah. Well, that, and I'll you just, plug an edge and look what happens. I mean, they did make a couple of breaks down that edge, but nothing that we couldn't handle but really. We stopped it. Tries off kicks. It's tries That's off killer. kicks. What do you do? I think we need to practice it. That was a good flick back from, I think it was Walker. Right? That was that was an arsy try. Yeah, that was an arsy try. That's what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Arsy, but the in the right place, the right. You've got but, to put yeah. yourself there. It's just like when they did that short dropout and Noffa had to jump up against a seven-foot bloody yeah. Sean Lane and Noffa found a way to bat that ball back yeah. to us, you know, when Jakey got injured. 
Like yeah. that that was a huge yeah. that was huge at the time too. Mm. Like those effort plays, mm. everyone was putting those one percenters in. Oh. It was so good to see. That was just that had Madge written all over it. So you it's know that that's tough. another thing Noffa did great. You know, like, it was just tough. That, that doesn't go down as any stat for Noffa. That's just I want to win. That's mm. not, there's no stat for that. You know, he didn't no win stat the for the effort areas. He just batted the mm. ball back for his for a team that was meant to get the ball back regardless. There should be a stat for smart plays. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And two points footy, for us for footy, doing it. Footy, <laughs> double points for the IQ. Yeah, IQ, like, yeah, IQ, IQ moment. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, to be honest, I, look, we gave away some silly penalties, which, look, I reckon some of them were complete shit, but I think that about a lot of stuff. Um, but footy IQ, just having Hastings back running that shit is just, yeah, it's, it's just on a different level now. And my mates are out and out para supporter and i just sent him a message like he he just said oh like he, he did a funny post saying oh you know like good on Parramatta for letting west tigers win and letting madge keep his job and this and that and i just wrote on there hastings is elite it's all i wrote <laughs> yeah and he just said straight up man like i'll be 100 percent honest like that he he was incredible today and he that's really that's what we were missing that iq that we've been talking about that little bit of footy smarts where you're making that right decision on that right on that real quick notice. And Aaron said it before. He's he's making them split decisions to go, cool, this is the play we're doing. Brooksy, I'll give you a bit of time because we've got angle to our attack now. We're not running all in a flat line. Notice that? Yeah. Brooksy standing behind. Yeah. It's giving him time. Para, they weren't really crowding him. Whereas as soon as Brooks is first receiver. He gets crowded and they're running straight at him. He shits his pants and does silly stuff. Those, like, just Hastings fronting the defense, giving it to Brooks, stopping, pretty much stopping the defense because that's what he was doing. And they were sitting flat footed. Like, that that was the IQ moment that we yeah. have really missed those, those little sparks where it's like, cool, I'm going to draw them in and then hold them. Bang, Brooksy gets the ball, and now he can use his footy smarts to see where he's going, what we've got. Oh, look, Noff is free. Do you think he would have done that at halfback? Hell no. Yeah. I don't think he would have done it. But even a couple of times, he jumped into dummy half. Like you said, his IQ, he just knows where to be at the right time. He sets things up properly. I still can't believe he hadn't had a game since round two and did what he did today, man. That like He had no match fitness. He's playing the most important position in the team. He's playing against a top four team. You know, it's it's a Herculean performance. The three games that he missed, how many do we win if he plays? We should have won two, two. of them anyway. Yeah. I, I still think whether he plays or not, we should be four out of six. I think we'll beat the Titans, we beat the Warriors if Jackson plays. 100%. Played. We should, like, to Titans be honest, won, we should have done it without him. Yeah. Yeah, we should have done it without him. Mm. Like, I don't know, just... I, I, but we would have done it easy with well, him. We might have used that chip kick cross field against the, tight, uh, the, 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 was it the Warriors when they were down a man. Like, we didn't even go to that. Like, yeah, yeah. To, Warriors to the right edge. edge. We're our right edge. Yeah, our right edge, yeah. Yeah. Well, this is... like, Did you guys notice this as well? With this game, we seemed to be a lot smarter with the ball we weren't doing those silly drops we weren't making those mistakes we made it's like it's almost like last week especially and the titans like we were really just sort of on edge everyone's like we have to win no matter what and they were just coming out and doing real silly shit hastings settled the ship stop relax Let's do what we practiced and let's make it work. I think it's all that, but technically, Shane, our attack was better. Like we basically got into their red zone three times. We scored three times. Yeah. You know, so like we how how often does that happen? We normally take three or four goes to get in there. We do five tackles a run around like in circles, and then maybe some stupid kick and we don't even get a repeat set. So what was that? Oh, yeah, Joe. Joe, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Man, well, it was pretty cool after the game. The entire main row was blocked off. Yep. And just like the West Tigers fan, the few West Tigers fans going off. That would have been just, a good time to be yeah. there today. So I just so wish, you know I wish there was more of you that just weren't cowards. <laughs> Obviously, you're away. You're away. I'll, I'll give it to you. I'm an out of towner. So like yeah. Was... yeah, you got the excuse. You <laughs> live far away. Yeah. Week, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, at the same ground. Yeah. Well, I was um, I was driving out of Alice Springs, and um, one of my mates called me. He's like, "Man, I've got tickets. I've got corporate tickets. Come along." 
It's like, hey, look. I won't be back in time. I won't be back in time. <laughs> But I think we're gonna get smashed. <laughs> I, I really don't know. Look, never thought we'd get smashed. I just I didn't oh. think we could win, but I never thought we'd get no. smashed. Para para, I was fearing para at para that, that worries me every time because we haven't beaten them like they've beaten us eight times in a row. Mm. Eight times in a row. That's, eight that's, times. That's, no one beats yeah. us nine times in a row. Because <laughs> no, we're we're the kings of yeah. nine. Yeah, although the roosters have got a concern no, about that. They they mentioned it a couple of times. Um, pre-game and after the game that Para had beaten us eight times in a row. And I was just like... You sure God. that's not... Ap- it is too. Yeah, right. It was also that's... nine out of the last ten, they were saying. Yeah. Uh, the one, the one win we got one, against one, one them. One in a row now against them. Yeah, that was our... <laughs> account starts yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> so since 2007... Because if you remember like early 2000s, they were a massive curse too. So between 2001 and... 2008, we only won three times to their, I think it's about 14. Yeah, when they lost the yeah. And then we, yeah. we flipped it. We were, we were there bogey for a while. So between 2009 and 2015, they only won a couple. But I felt like we shared those games at um, Homebush. I felt like we shared those Anzac Day games. You know, we had 40 and 50,000. Like we had a couple of games yeah. where they won, we won. So our last losses, so Western Sydney Stadium Last year in June, we lost 40 to 12. Yeah. Uh, April 2021, we lost at Easter 36 22. Uh, that was at ANZ. Uh, September 2020, so obviously the last game of the season, we lost 28 24. 23rd of July, in front of only 6,000 people. Uh, 26 16, that was obviously fresh after, that was fresh after COVID. Lockdowns, oh, right. they, yeah. They had, um, 21, 20. Crowds have only just come back. Uh, Twenty nineteen, lost thirty to eighteen. Uh, two thousand eighteen, lost twenty four twenty two. So the last win was two thousand eighteen Easter. We won thirty twenty. Yeah, they started that. They started that season zero and six. That was their wooden spoon. Was he in the shirt? Was he? Robbie was sick. Yeah, he's got the flu. Oh, Joe's admitted it. So I got tickets. I bought I bought four tickets uh, probably in February because I did that whole membership thing, the other buy membership. Anyway, I bought four tickets. I thought, um, who's who's going to go? Joe said he would go, and then last week. But he's admitted to it. At least we got the win, Joe. I ended up selling them um, to other ones. And shout to Pete who gave me a free ticket to move to the uh, – Tigers Bay today as well, so all all worked out in the end. It's uh, as I said to you today, it's Easter, so I better forgive you. Um, righto. So who are we up to? Joffa. So you started talking about Joffa already. Did finish Joffa? I didn't read his stats. Do you want his stats? You know what? Yes, yes, I'd like his stats. <laughs> <laughs> Shane, Shane's Shane's captain tonight. <laughs> we we'll, we we'll rotate who's captain. Shane's captain tonight. <laughs> Yeah, I was waiting. I was waiting for a break, and you just didn't shut up. Josh yeah. brought it up, and then I was like, "Oh yeah, about Joffa." <laughs> <laughs> and they carried on. I tell you what, though, guys, <laughs> we've got one Para at Leichhardt later in the <laughs> year. That's going to be room. fun. Say that again, Aaron. I tell you what, though, we've got Para at Leichhardt later in the year during Origin. That's going to be fun. Absolutely, especially in, in the preseason poll you put out. I said that was the game I was most looking forward to. Mm. After beating them today, I am looking forward to that even more. And we've only played two home games, haven't we, out of six? Yeah, we have. We've just had we've yeah. just come off a three three away in a row. One was Melbourne. Yeah. Combank. Yeah, yeah. It's it's two. Combank Warriors. We had Warriors at uh, Campbell Campbell Town. Town. So only two home games. So we've got what, eighteen games so left. I, I thought we were going to Leichhardt next week for South. I didn't know it was a Combank. I got excited I was going to Leichhardt. I'm not going to Combank. We know I'll that. go into Leichhardt till after Magic Round. Yeah, Leichhardt, I don't mind Leichhardt being later in the year when it's a bit warmer. But anyway, the point I was originally trying to make is that with the 18 games left, that means what? We've got ten. two... Ten. Yeah, ten. Thanks, Aaron, for doing the maths quicker than me. Ten um, home games <laughs> out of the last 18. So It's crazy that out of six games, we've only played two home. 
Mm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, I yeah, but I'll just make up for it. You think you'd get 50, back to that game? You think it'll be 50 yeah, It's yeah. I'm, my point is, we've got a lot, a few home, a few away games out of the way. We've done that's the Gold Coast. Good. We've done. Um, where, do, where do we go, Cronulla? It's very good that we don't have to face Melbourne in Melbourne. So that's, mm. that's a good one for this season. Yeah. So we've got a hopefully, lot of home games bunched up later in the year. I think uh, four out of the last five. Our home, our home games as well. Oh, that's killer! That's what we need. Mm. And the and the only yeah, one of those we, games we wanna, that's the away game is we the be within, We want to be mathematically with the shot. Otherwise, it's going to be a waste of time. Wanna, I'm sick of being mathematically with the shot. I just no. want to be in the eight. Like, I just After being zero be and five, there. I want to be mathematically something. Yeah. <laughs> mathematically <laughs> fifteenth. <15. laughs> <laughs> mathematically <laughs> ninth. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how good we had it. <laughs> how good we had it. <laughs> Winning one out of our last two and all that sort of stuff. So. Righto. Do we want Joffa's stats? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, Thirteen runs, one hundred and seventeen meters, forty-five. What do you got? You got a quarter pounder. Yeah, I'm uh, go for it. Go for it. <laughs> Just pull your pull your mic away so no one can hear you chewing. <laughs> um, I lost my train of thought there. You got caught me off guard there with um the quarter pounder, Joffa. <laughs> 45 post contact meters, which uh, is up there, one of the highest in the team. Two tackle breaks, 13 hit ups. He had an offload, 34 tackles, only two missed. Uh, and no errors, just one penalty from Joffa. Um, anything to add on Joffa, Aaron? No, not really. We pretty yeah, much hammered him. And just. Yeah, <laughs> we'll move on to um, Jock Madden. So Jock Madden came on with 22 minutes to go when Jackie Simpkin went off. Whoa. Was that a phone call? Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. We just blew everyone's eardrums out. Uh, so Jock Madden, 22 minutes came on when Jakey Simpkin went off. He went to five five eight because Brooksy went into yeah, into five, Hooker. I do think he was sharing that with um Jackson. Yeah. Brooks I, I just noticed um Jackson in there quite a bit. Uh not a lot to really he barely he barely three kicks, hundred and eight meters. He did do one really good kick. He landed it about a meter out and we we jammed him. Pretty well, but um, the only thing I noticed, I just to me, it seemed like our offense went really clunky when he came on. Um, I know it's not his fault, but I just noticed that as soon as he came on, we sort of lost a bit of that spark that Jackson and Brooks had. That, that was just me. I, I don't know if other people saw it as well, but that's just how I felt. Anything to add, Rob? About Joffa? Yeah. No, just, no, no. Um, we're on, we're on uh, Madden. Madden now. Madden, I, I just... He didn't, yeah, he just didn't look like he got into the flow of the game coming on so late. So, yeah. yeah. It wasn't... It was know, a weird... Pretty pretty hard to judge him on that, but he didn't really add anything or... I don't know. You feel for him in that role, though. You do. Yeah, he's like a halfback on, on the bench. With the game weird. on the line, 15 minutes, mm. whatever it was. What's that? Does this game mean we're on Combank from Mitch? <laughs> it's our jungle now. It's our jungle now. <laughs> should we play? Should we keep playing games there next year? Well, now? If we get the spoon, the spoon goes to Combank as well. So either way, we've got to play. <laughs> leave the spoon there. We can leave it in Paris. Yeah, leave it in Paris. That's our third home ground. We can leave it there. It, it can uh, join the wooden spoons they already have in their collection. Exactly, they've got plenty in there. Anything to add um, on Jock at all, Aaron? Not really much. Not much to, to say. No, he he didn't really get the time. I think while he was on there, he tried. You can't fault the effort. Uh, it was one of those situations where he had he come he came on and he he just had to hang in there. Uh, came in fairly yeah came in a bit too late to really have too much of an impact on the game. I did notice in the Discord a few people were saying that Jock appeared spent, probably about eight. Or so minutes before he came off with his injury, so a few people probably surprised he didn't get on a little bit sooner. But I mean, he did his job. 
he was on he was on the field when we when we got the win. So all credit boys, to him, I guess. The boys could <laughs> the, their audio they can't hear you at the moment, but they were just saying, um, yeah, that's all right. He, yeah, that was a really good rant from Aaron. You guys missed it. Just try and fix fix, fix your audio. Get your phone working again. We'll move on to Alex Twole. While the boys, I'll let you go first with Twolly, Aaron, but I'll go through his stats. So uh, Twolly had 18 runs for 166 run meters. Boys, your mics are still hot, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so Twally, yeah, 18 runs, 166 metres, 61 post-contact, which was the most in the team. Yep, most by a fair bit. Five tackle breaks. Twally found himself in a couple of holes today, which was uh, pretty funny. Uh, 18 hit-ups, two passes, 46 tackles, and none missed. Wow. Uh, just typical Alex Twally, isn't it, Rob? It is, but um, there was a bit more to Twal today. I, I thought he ran with a lot more gusto than normal. He looked hard to stop. I even saw him pass the ball in the first half before he hit the line. I could not believe yeah. it, what's going on. They were actually developing him, getting him to do something different. He's one of our best players as well, and I think it's his best game, not only for the year, for the last two years, because he always makes those 40 to 50 tackles, none missed. I just think he was outstanding, and, and he you know easily could have been a man of the match. He... It's, it's hard when someone does all the hard work, they don't get the credit. But I actually thought he stood out a bit in attack and he was making some penetrating runs. And, yeah, it was fantastic from 12. What do you think, mate? Well, that's what I've said. Like, just he's had no attack. Yeah. Like, he's he's been defensively the best forward we've got, without a doubt. But we just needed him to run. And today, like, he was running hard. Like, I haven't seen him break tackles. I thought he was going to score a try in that second half. Yeah. I was like, holy shit, he's gone through. Yeah. Holy shit, he's going to get his first try. That would have been so good. <laughs> he got tackled, but <laughs> he's busting tackles and he's running hard. And look, I'm not what, say, whatever I'm not we say did, it, but he's probably listened to me. Whatever you know, we did like, during the week, man, we got to bottle that. <laughs> whatever we did during the week, we got to bottle it because literally you could say eight or 10 blokes bought their absolute A game, to, a game this 100%. week. And we need to be able to work out why we did that as well. Like, not just say, oh, great, it happened. What did we do? Did we do anything differently? What was what was different in the lead up to the Cronulla game, for example? You know, because the intensity was there the first 10 minutes against Cronulla and we just fell apart. So we've got to work out what worked for us, what didn't work for us. Polished as well. It was polished, but I mean, you know, we, were, we had backs against the wall this week too, today. And we, we fought out of some really tough spots and we fought on the back of a heavy penalty count and in our own half, and everything was really good, man. We just played a really good game, so I was so proud of the group. They well, really played That's well. it. We actually um, we played and defended our mistakes, and that's that's what we don't do. Yeah. We, we make a mistake or or something happens, we give away a penalty, and all of a sudden, bang, 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 we've got three, four tries on us. It's just like, oh, well, what's the point? Yeah. And you can see some of the boys are thinking, what's the point? Aaron, any thoughts on Alex while I try and get your uh... – the, the, or the speakers going. Thoughts on Twally today? Great game. No, I love can hear, hang on. To, to break the fourth wall here, like I need to tell the boys this. So your mic is going through my... So yeah, my video, okay. all the mics are going through my video. Okay. So you're, you're sweet. If you're talking to the mic, people will hear. Okay. Go, Aaron. Absolutely great game from Twally. His tack- I loved watching his tackle busts and I was hopeful he was going to get over for that, for that meat pie. I... I would have been very upset if he did, though, because I didn't manifest my hashtag try for Twally before the game like I was supposed to. Yep. I uh, ended up getting a little fired up, but great game from him. It was so good seeing him actually get more involved in the tack. I, you can't fault him. Absolute workhorse in defense, as always. It was, yeah, great, great game. Well played, Twally. Absolutely. It was, um, yeah, Carlos in the chat. It was top five. Game for well, there we go. Just turn it down. There we go. Just turn it down. There we go. Just turn it down. Sorry, guys. But, uh, it's our first time in the room together, and we're live. So, new experience for everyone. You can hear Aaron now. Sweet. There we go. 
Right, moving on to Tommy McKayley. So he played 27 minutes. Uh, he had uh, seven runs for 59 metres, 23 post contact, uh, four tackle breaks, uh, one offload. Seven receipts, tackles made, 17 to one missed. And one pretty McKaylee like error. I said it when it happened live. But, um, yeah, Aaron, I'll let you go first this time. But, um, yeah, losing the ball in the play of the ball. But thoughts on the game from Thomas McKaylee? It wasn't a poor game, but it wasn't a great game. Uh, like what we were saying with Musgrove before, having them both on the field at the same time is probably one of the weakest links we have. Um, yeah, when he made that error, I just I had my head in my hands. I was like, how how could you continue to do that? You've got to. It's the it's the thing he really needs to get out of his game. But overall, wasn't a poor performance. Wasn't a great performance. He just. While he was on, he did his job. He uh, he made up for that mistake as well, just like the rest of the team did. You were saying, Shane, that we don't uh, we don't make up for our like we don't defend our mistakes. And the last time we did that would have been the Penrith at Leichhardt game last year. So it's a, been a long time between drinks where we can say the teams actually aimed up and made up for the mistakes that they've made. Yeah, Aaron summed it up pretty well. I just, like I said earlier, I just don't think we can have McKaylee and Musgrove on the field at the same time there. No. They can just go a bit AWOL in terms of what they're, where they've got to be and, and you know, positional play. But um, he tried hard. But, yeah, pro probably wasn't his best game. But, you know, it wasn't a bad game either. Look, as we've said on here a couple of times, we need to run an attacking forward, which I would say Zane... And McKaylee are both attacking forwards yep. and a defensive forward. Jimmy is a good defensive forward. His attack has been great too. Mm. So look, Alex the same. Alex is exactly the same today. Look, like the thing is, we need to have we need to shore it up with one of those boys telling him what to do. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I think once you put Zane on there with him, sort of, I think. They both get a little bit lost, a little bit hot-headed, and really try to smash someone. But that's just my my two cents on the on how he plays. But that's that's sort of what it seems like to me. He gets very hot-headed. He's like, oh, I'm just going to run through everyone, and we'll just do something silly like that, drop the ball, and just yeah. just something silly get like that, that. Bad play the ball out of his. Trying to take too. after Packer a bit, you reckon? Trying to <laughs> model his game on the Packer esque. Well, style. if he, if he could have put a hit like Packer did on uh, Madison. I'd be pretty happy. <laughs> we all would have loved that. <laughs> I'll be honest. I I couldn't stand Packer, but he did that, and my respect grew. And then it he had a few good moments. He had a few good moments. Pretty quick after that too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Next, uh, Alex Seifarth. So poor old Alex got he got zero. He didn't come on, did he? Eighteenth man. Eighteenth man. He was. He came on. With, um, Sorry, Ken. Ken, yeah. So Alex is eighth man. Sorry, Ken's twenty-one. So Kenny's below him. See the numbers stuffed you up there. Yeah, they did the jersey <laughs> numbers. I saw, I saw Alex come on in his polo and short black shorts. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> what are you talking after about? After the full time, sorry. He just cruised on with his polo. So Ken, Ken Marlowe's in there. He's last in the order because he was wearing number twenty-one for the late change. Uh, just let the players pick their numbers. Uh, so Kenny, thirteen runs, one hundred and ten meters, forty post contact. Uh, he had one line break. Obviously, he scored a try as well. It's not long before he went off injured. Uh, he also had one tackle, one missed. So fifty fifty on the <laughs> on the defense, but no errors. No, sorry, one error. There was. Trying to think of the error that can, well, obviously when it went out, went out the wide, and Gutho decided to flex on it for some reason. 
Um, of course, it's Gutho. Thoughts on Kenman Marley? So I didn't see last week's game. He, <laughs> apparently, he was pretty bad <laughs> last week. He, he, he was sort of game. I just poor. Didn't want to be here sort of game. Like he didn't want to bend over and pick up a ball, and he just didn't look interested. But like the two balls he could have jumped on. And he just literally walked next to him over the sideline. Yeah. And I was pissed when he was called back up in the team. Like I was fuming because he really, after, if you're a captain, you put everything on the line, you know, hundred percent. And I'm telling you, he put 10% on in last week and how he came back in. I, I was fuming. Look, he scored a try, cool, but I still don't think he deserved to be in the team after last week's effort. Like, I really was pissed off that he was in the team after being a captain and playing how he did. It's just not on. I just See, he didn't deserve to be in the team, Josh, but like I said last Thursday night, I'm actually, I was actually quietly happy that he was playing today because mm. I knew he wasn't going to do that twice in a row. We didn't really get the aerial threat out of him that we normally get, but his finish today was a first-class finish, mm. arm outstretched, didn't look like going over the sideline or touching the corner post or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, so I was glad he was there. He was good under the high ball. We Went... kicked to our little winger. I know, but you know, we, <laughs> we, we were we were kind of unlucky too when they did that bat back for their try for Niakore. Like if Ken was there, Ken catches that on the full. You know, mm. he just come off a few minutes earlier injured. So yeah, Moses. I, 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 I want him. Ken there, but I want the best version of Ken there. But I accept that he had every right to be dropped. But deep down, I was bloody pleased that he was brought back up because really, unfortunately, we don't have anyone better. So to me, it was I thought just, he played pretty to good. To me, it was just the attitude. Yeah, it was an attitude. Like, you know, and I accept that. And Madge had every right to drop him. And I agree with everyone that wanted him dropped. But I'm glad he played today. And I'm glad he scored a try. And well, that's, He scored a try. And look, at the end of the day, good. he looked pretty good, to be honest. So we, we, won. we, we need him. We don't have the depth, mate. We need, we need him. We need him to be there. Aaron, thoughts on Kenny today? Yeah, I, I, with Shane, I'm with Shane on that one. I was pretty pissed off to see him named back in the team. Didn't think he deserved to be there. Uh, everything Shane said is pretty much bang on. You're a captain of the team. You don't do do it half assed or half heartedly. You you put your body on the line. You leave it all out on the field. You motivate the team, and none of his actions against the Sharks showed that. So to see him named again, or to see him come back on the what was it the Sunday team list. I I was pretty pissed off, but in the end, he played pretty pretty well. Um, it was kind of funny. I, it, to me, it looked like his try he scored. He didn't even need to run over the line. He kind of jogged. <laughs> he he didn't even have to. Yeah, he didn't have to do anything fancy, anything extreme to to get that. He just put the dive on for a bit of flair. I think. Right, to, to finish the show, if anyone in the comments wants to ask the boys a question or is, if there's something that you think we may have missed talking about tonight, uh, drop a question. While we do that, I'm just going to run through the ad for this week for our sponsor. I'm going to do it live. I don't normally normally do it in post, but uh, after the nail-biting finish tonight, can the boys go back-to-back against South Sydney Rabbitohs? So you can watch it live and loud from the lounge or the sports bar this Saturday, 23rd of April. Kickoff at 7.35 p.m. That's, a, a, of course, at West Ashfield. You can make a night of it with dinner in the garden with all your favorite burgers, schnitzels, and wildfire pizzas. Step up, step up and play at the home of the West Tigers, West Ashfield, 115 Liverpool Road, Ashfield. More information, visit West Ashfield website, westashfield.com.au, or follow them on Facebook or Instagram at West Ashfield. And if anyone, any of our listeners are ever at West Ashfield, um, tweet us or send us a, a DM on one of the socials so we can can uh, repost it and that sort of thing. It'd be cool to see people going there that are also listeners of the pod. Uh, boys, anything to add? Yeah, I want to ask you guys a question. I'll ask Josh first, and maybe Shane can go second. Do you reckon with today's win, Madge keeps his job for the season, not just the next few weeks? Do you think that win will galvanise everyone? I mean, I know it's going to keep everyone off his back for a few weeks, but do you think beating a top team the way we did today, with all the players we had out, um, you know, gets him, gets, you know, get a little bit of faith restored in Madge? 
I'm going to add that to because Mitchell asked a pretty similar similar question on Facebook. He said, okay. "Is this game proof? Madge had locker room on his side, and that Hastings is Madge's adopted child." Oh, he always had a locker room on his side. I had no problem there. Did he have front office on his side? That's my bigger concern. I don't care about the media what they say. At least I'll be off his backs. But just do, will our front management stick with him? Or is it just a state of execution till the end of the year? They can ruin it next week. If they if they lose badly, the Rabbitohs, I think it's all back on. Okay. Um, I don't know. I think they're going to be. They might give him a little bit longer if they were going to sack him this week. They maybe not. I don't know. I think management aren't willing to sack him. I don't think management are really keen to pull the trigger and start all over again. What do you reckon, Shane? Well. Sheens has backed him to the end of the season. And I'll be honest, I think it's Sheen's choice. I really do. I, I don't think Pasco has any involvement in this anymore. I he doesn't. Re- I agree. I doesn't. really think he has been shit canned after the shit show he looked over. Looked over <laughs> and was involved in. Because look, he was involved in it all. And I really do think that the reason the real job of Tim is overlooking this sort of stuff and he's backing him to the hilt. Like I really do think that there's no chance Madge will get fired this year. See, I read with no, no chances. I I don't, I I really don't think there is a chance. And like it, it is Sheen's choice. And we all know, that this is probably going to take a couple of years to fix. Mm. What's the point in getting rid of a coach if you do know this is going to take a couple of years to fix? Exactly. That That's is just I stupid. I've, I've heard a few people say that the effort last week was the players trying to get this coach sacked. Well, look, I can say that with last year too. I really do think we through that game because there was plenty of chances we could have scored tries against the Bulldogs, who were shit. They, yeah. were, they were the worst team by... Long shot, and they beat us in the last game of the year. Thrashed us, mm. thrashed us, and they were shit. Like they didn't play good. We let them win. Yeah. So, so just what I hear from Buzz Roth, Rothfield on three hundred and sixty, and the fact that you ring Sheens all the time, and the fact that Rothfield kind of says Sheens is deliberately distancing himself from Madge, like letting it be Madge's team. So if anything goes wrong, they can get rid of him. I kind of read between the lines that Buzz thought that. You know, he's he was like hanging. I mean, look, I thought he was one big loss away from getting sacked. If we got thrashed today, I would have thought that was the end of it. But I actually think with today's win, I, I can't see any reason why they wouldn't say, how good was this? We can build on this. Might, we might not make the eight, but there's a lot of good signs here. They are playing with in, intent, and he might stay the rest of the year and beyond. Well, I'll be honest. I think Buzz is a dickhead. And I would, say, <laughs> I would say most of the stuff he says is utter shit. Whether he is talking to Sheens or not, look, Sheens isn't distancing himself from Madge. He's backed him every single time it's asked. So wherever Buzz is getting this from is trash. But Sheens also backed Brooksy to be the halfback two weeks ago as well. So, you know. Well, look, he's still in the halves. He's still but, in the halves, but I'm saying he's not the main man. And that's good. Yeah. Because it it's, it's it what we've thing. needed. But I look, I just think it's easy to comment on Madge's job security, but this this is what I don't understand. Barrett is in a worse position than Madge is because he's just bought a lot of big players and they're still dog shit. Well, Barrett's won four games out of 30 hmm. in, in a year and a quarter. But that's it. So the, the heat should be on him now. Like why – look, even um, oh, Mary from Saints. Yeah, Paul McGregor. Where, where's he on the heat map? Like, oh, you mean Anthony Griffin? Oh, that's it. Sorry. Yeah, he got he got shit canned. Yeah, yeah. Got shit canned. Anthony, Anthony Griffin <laughs> yeah. is just as bad. They've lost more games in the last. That's, that's what I mean. Yeah, but they won. They won on the weekend. They beat Newcastle. So yeah, yeah. but like, this, this is what I don't get. Like, why is it Madge who's just getting like? Look, I, I get it's easy. We, we've spoken about this before. It's too easy to put Tigers in the media because they know they're going to get clicks. No, because just from and, my chat, chat with Lee last year, and I know you spoke to him yeah. the same day or the day after, like his thing to me was we came ninth, we came 11th, we came 13th. The progression is bad. So I'm kind of thinking, well, if we come 15th or last, 
then there's just no future. But I tried to say to Lee, Lee, I said, it's going to get worse. I said, trust me. I said, I'm looking, I, I said, the same I, said thing. I'm, I said, I'm looking forward to the season. But if you think this squad is going to get you in the top eight, you're freaking dreaming. 100%. I told him, do you know footy? Yeah. <laughs> I literally said, do you know footy? Like, do you really watch yeah, footy? he told me he blocked your number. Right? <laughs> he probably did. <laughs> <laughs> I've still got him. I'll try to call him after. <laughs> Thank you, <man. laughs> No, like, I, I told him it's going to get worse before it gets better. And I knew this. I, I was not keen for this season. I, I really, This is the least keen for footy I've been in a long time. Well, you know, the best thing is... Because ever, I knew it was going to get bad. I'm keen for next week. I wasn't keen Look, for this week. I'm keen for next week. We're all so, keen. So am I. Look, I want I, another game right now. I just <laughs> knew Hastings was going to bring something different. The problem is we don't have the guys around him. And we're... They, it's the boys that we've got injured as well. Think if Stefano is playing today. Mm. Mm-hmm. Just him alone. Adam. Adam. Yeah. Sean. Just, just him yeah. alone. Like, bring so much to this team and yeah. we're missing him. Yeah. Adam. Sean. Like, all these these are boys. Like, Sean was going to start this Tommy year. Tommy Talao. Tommy Talao, yeah. That's it. And mm. look, to be honest, like, they're all backups for second row because I really do reckon when Tommy comes back, he'll be playing second row. I reckon he'll be pushing for it because he's too big for a centre. So who do, you, who do you drop for that though? I don't know. Are we going to get another second rower? Like we've been talking about it. Mm. Getting written the core. Well, the core has said something but, about he's open to the suggestion now because he's knocked back what Canola have offered him. But the thing is, like we've got three development players this year who are second rowers. We've got Sean, Isaiah Papalihi. We've got Luke Probably, Garner. I'd say, yeah, if Garner stays. Yeah. Well, we've, he's the second row. He's not a Well, that's, that's it. We've got Garner. He's on our stocks. We've Safe got Arth. Tommy Talao. We've got Seifarth. Like, that's eight. Hmm. And then we get Britton Nakora. That's nine. We get, like, how far do we go with it? We're just a team of back rollers. Put him in the centers, put him in the fullback, <laughs> put him in the halves. Like hookers once. <laughs> like, we, we need <laughs> wingers. We need, we need back depth. Because, like, we need another fullback there. We need like there's so much stuff we need. Mm. But like I, I look personally, I think Madge is safe. I, yeah. I really don't. His tactical decisions the last few weeks have really pissed me off. But at the same time, there's not much he can do. Like really thinking back now with hindsight, which is a beautiful thing. Mm. What, what else was he to do really? Oh, like the Gold Coast look, one, man, that some, still shoots me. Sorry. Some of his, some of his, not going to defend that. No, nah, like his interchanges have been absolutely shit. But. I think there's times where he's just like, what do we do? Like, even he's confused with what he's looking at because we were looking at it going, what the fuck is but this? But today, today with attack, because that's been our bad thing with match. The defence hasn't been a problem all year. Okay, it's, it's, it's the yeah. attack, and the attack looked good today. Every time we got the red zone, I, bang, we scored. Was that Mads or was that just Jackson Hastings? That's just Jackson Hastings. Yeah. No, that's not Mads. You can't just say it's Jacko. Like, he's got no, no I, coaches. I really do think it's just Jacko. Really? I really, yeah, because we've got stability. We've got somebody yelling, like giving the ship direction. Whereas Brooks just, he just shits the bed and just yeah. keeps his mouth shut. Yeah. Whereas we've got somebody there who is telling people, you go here, you go there, you do this. This is what we're playing next. Get ready. And we, those little short balls that Brooks was doing today, like Jackson was doing, have we seen them the last five weeks? No. We're seeing shit today that we haven't seen from this team. Mm. Why? Because Jackson's there. He's running the ship. The first two games, the reason why we weren't seeing this shit, he got told, sit on the back. Yeah. This is Brooks's team. Yeah. Sorry, Brooks. This ain't your team anymore. Yeah. Some things happen for a reason, don't they? The fact that he got suspended has turned it around. Now it's just 100% made it crystal clear he's the guy to lead us forward. 100%. And look, yeah. he's Madge's voice. You can tell how much he likes Madge. Look at him up in, like, he's up in the coaches' boxes for three, mm. literally three games in a row. Yeah. And he's got the goal. He has to be captain. Now, so. You got to make him captain. Hundred yeah. percent. Like I'll be honest. Don't forget like, one of those games when he was up in the coach's box. He paid his own way to get up there because the club wouldn't pay for him. Yeah, the Gold Coast game. Well, that's yeah. it. Like that shows his dedication. And look, I love Adam, but I really do think we should have a, a halfback as our captain. And Adam's captain there. Look, I think hundred percent when he's back, he's going to be co-captains. Like I said, but I don't think there'll be out of sight, out of mind, man. You're forgetting how good Adam is. I know how good Adam is, and I want him back. Yeah, we need co captains at the worst. We need the very worst. But Adam won't be the sole captain. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Jackson will talk more, 
Jackson's more of an influence. Watch, mm. watch when he comes back because yeah, I think like, they're both very similar in that regard, in my opinion. But I, I really do think there's it will have to be both of them. It can't be one or the other. It's going to be okay. co-captains because so. that's the smartest idea. And then we've got two guys in the middle running it. Or if we put Adam in the centres, because really, like I think at the moment that's probably the best bet. That's where we're weak and having someone who can play the ball in the centres right now would be quite huge. Handy. Yeah. <laughs> you swap Garner, we've all respected Luke Garner, swap Luke Garner and Adam Dwight here. 100%. <laughs> what have we got? Yeah. We've got attack. Yeah. Oh, and we've got defence. We do miss Adam yeah. dearly. Yeah. yeah. But, um, right, Aaron, any, anything else to add for you, mate? Anything we've missed? Honestly, no, not really. Right, Shane, MG Pumps, back to work this week. What's going on? Oh, I mean, just catching up on everything. Um, after those floods, it was just flat out. So can actually take a bit of a breath and get everything sorted and do the jobs that we had planned that we'd moved. So <laughs> get through, get back into working. Um, I, was, I was off from last Wednesday. So I had Wednesday, Thursday off, and then obviously the long weekend. So... It was a much needed break. I, I haven't had time off since I bought into the business, so it was needed. I feel fresh. I'm keen to work. So, and having a good Tigers win makes it even better. I'm, Absolutely, I'm keen to work. How... I'm not pissed off tomorrow. <laughs> I'm gonna wear. You boys gonna wear Tigers gear tomorrow? All day. All day. Right. <laughs> I, have, I have smiled. Pajamas. I've been smiling for two hours, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm loving life right the now. The Daniel Ricardo smile all Love night. <laughs> I'll be honest. Huge win. Huge win. I'm, I'm keen for next week because this this is the thing. Watching 360, they're the first to throw us under the bus. All of them. I don't care if some say they're fans of the West Tigers fans. That's fucking bullshit. Because they are the first to throw us under the bus. Because mm. they know that if they bring up a headline about the Tigers, people are going to watch. Tonight, Buzz Rothfield said, oh, if the guys show up like that, they'll smash the rabbitos. I was like, what is what is this? Buzz <laughs> hates us. And he was like saying, okay, these guys will do it. And I'll be 100% honest. If we show up like that, we would have absolutely smoked Melbourne the first round. Like smoked them. I reckon we would have put another four or five tries on. Yeah. I watched the South game on Friday. And if you just see the score and you didn't watch the game, you think, oh, South killed Canterbury. Canterbury was winning 6-0 after 27 minutes. They mm. were all over them. They made a couple of mistakes in the red zone. And then they got a sin bin for Jeremy, Jeremy Marshall King. Mm. And South got three tries in 10 minutes. And basically yep. the game was over. And I remember against Melbourne when South were getting pumped there. Melbourne got a player put in the sin bin. And South come back and force golden points. South seem to only want to play well against 12 men. So we've well, got to be up. We've got to be, yeah, but we've got to be up to our ears in, in the game next week. And Latrell to me is the best player at his best. So, oh, in so, the team, fact that so the fact that he's not there, Souths are a good team. They've got great attack. But, he's he's the game I, changer. I'm, I know we can match it with him now. Like today was just so good. I'm really, really excited for next week. What I, what I hope this does to this win is our home game next week. So we don't have a home game. So the week after that is Wollongong and then it's Manly and then it's Magic Round and then Leichhardt against the Dog. So three weeks after the next week. So, so to you got to go to, if you want a home game in the next month, you're going to have to go to Combank. But I hope today gets fans that were on the fence about going to Combank. I know like people want to vote with their feet, but I don't think either way, if we get 40,000 people next week, not that we will, although it's South, South get good crowds. Like get and cheer, get to the game and cheer the boys. Like a lot, a lot of people were too scared to today. They didn't want to go watch us. Come support the boys. Yes, the contracts up. Yeah, after this year. So so that's it. Like we can go. So just go. Like we need everyone to show support. And man, like I'll be honest, it's the best stadium to watch footy. It is awesome. Doesn't matter where you are. Best big stadium. Yeah, Mm. that's it. You can watch. It's not like Ardo. No, no. Like look. I'm talking like stadium, stadium, like Stadium Australia, mm. like or just all that sort of stuff. Like, you can stadium is not a suburban they, they've built it. They've built it like a football stadium, like soccer stadium. That's, that's literally what they've done. Yeah. You can sit in the nosebleeds and you can see what's going on. Mm. 
and it's probably the only stadium that we play at, like rugby league, where you can sit in the shittest seats and still actually have a decent view. Like it really is. Mm. And look, I don't like playing there. Actually, I've got a gripe from today though. So I missed the first 10 minutes of the game because it was they it was only 28,000, wasn't sold out. The security were holding people back from getting through. So getting through today, the, the tickets. Jersey. No, Eels fans too. They were all annoyed too. <laughs> the queue was like almost the length of the stadium of us trying to get in through the gates today. And it was kickoff five minutes wasn't after. This game meant to be sold out two months ago or something. Well, no, it wasn't sold out. 28, 28,000. Well, they were saying. They were saying the they Eels posted on their the socials Eels that it's sold out. out. Yeah, for all my tickets. Yeah, sorry, what's that, Aaron? The Eels posted on their socials today that it's sold out. Doesn't it hold 40,000? Yeah, I thought it held 30. 30. 30. 30. So 1,500 people didn't use yeah. their tickets, Probably obviously. Tigers fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, the, and also Bankwest today, the queues couldn't, like, the queues for the food and bars didn't co- Every time I've gone there, I've had a good experience straight to the front of the bar, but obviously West Tigers game is not as full. They've all been good. The bars... All that probably, stuff. Yeah, they probably dropped some stuff because they don't know what they have to pay. Maybe for. everyone. I mean, everywhere hospi- hospitality hospitality struggling at the moment. Maybe it was a staff shortage yeah. or so, or something. But so I, went, I went. I went. I went down. Can get seven fifty than work. Yeah, exactly. At the moment, anyway, that's what a lot of people are doing. So. But I, I went down. In, I thought I'll wait till the game starts into the second half. Although I'll go down and get a Coke Zero, and the queues were just miles for drinks. I, I can't justify standing in a queue for more than. A couple of minutes. Another thing too, not a slight slight rant. When you go to watch sport in America, you might remember. Is it? Did we ever have people walking around stadiums with food? Yes, we did. I America. swear, when I was a kid, no, here. Yeah. I uh, swear, I remember you know, as a like kid, peanut, like an ice cream, ice cream, ice cream, ice cream and shit. Yeah. Why don't we have that anymore? Why don't we have guys walking around? What money? They'll make oh, money. Just to pay people. Oh, that's probably just to pay people. And hey, you're right. They used to come up with a grandstand. Yeah, they yeah the big, the, the big, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Magnums yeah, and all yeah, sorts. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. Buy ice cream. In America, you get beer. Guy comes, yeah. guys come around with we'll beers the on them. Yeah. yeah, Americans are lazy. No, they want to get. They want to get up. You got to bring it to them. Why don't we have uh, staff costs? Maybe, but a beer is twelve dollars. RS, I mean, alcohol-wise, RSA might make it a bit hard. Yeah. We're like a bit of a nanny state when it comes to alcohol here compared to America. But go around and sell some fucking Magnums or drinks, just some soft drinks. At six, at seven bucks for a soft drink. Whenever I go to Combank, I make sure I'm in the box. So yeah, <laughs> you're, yeah, yeah. I was sitting with I the... Just, po- I just hate sitting like... If, have, I might have some, like hate... Having to get drinks. Well, you ha- you have like sixteen beers a game. You'll be in the bloody bar queue oh, the whole game. 100%. So, like when we were at, when we did Leichhardt last, we were grabbing. Like, I'm pretty sure it was six beers each, and there was four of us. So we're getting six beers each and sitting down. So that's twenty four beers. <laughs> right, <laughs> Beanie. Each, <laughs> and that was each run. And, oh, I mean, that's why it's dangerous. And they're VBs too. So. Ugh, I'd rather I'd rather drink out of the toilet than drink VB. But uh, <laughs> unless we, unless <laughs> if Carlton United Breweries want to sponsor us, uh, we'll take. There we go. I, I literally moved my mouse pad slightly and shut everything down. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Aaron just looked confused. Aaron, <laughs> Aaron, Aaron was just, Aaron was just the whole... I saw, I saw Josh disappear and I could see like Rob's and Shane's mouths moving and I'm like, what's going on now? <laughs> I moved. Going, you look so confused. I, I'm, I'm the touch pad or something. That must be... Uh, means it's time time to end. We've been going for what? Two, two and a quarter yeah, yeah. hours. Boys... Uh, Aaron, thanks for coming on last minute. Uh, as always, give us a follow on the social guys at Westlife Pod on Twitter and Instagram. Give us a like on Facebook if you haven't. Just go through and then YouTube. Thanks to to all who've tuned in through YouTube tonight. Give us a subscribe. We're up to about 120 subs or something. 
through there. Support our sponsors, West Ashfield, MG Pump Solutions. And, boys, we'll see if we, we can do this in sync. As always, go the Tigers. Go, go the Tigers. Go the Tigers.